Hey, IPA. Hello. Hello. We are a big game nerd ready to talk about in Snark, Snark Souls. We are... From Soft Souls Born Plus Games Tier List Maker. Yes, we are your resident uh, greasers, greasy nerds. Uh, <laughs> here... that's, a, that's a much different. Uh, that's a fucking book. <laughs> The Outsiders? That's a much different version of The Outsiders. <laughs> anyway. yeah. So, uh, we're going to be making the obviously most definitive tier list of Souls games ever created. Because um, obviously, we have the best opinions. So Yes, the only, the one and only best opinions. Bobby, tell me about just your life with these games. A broad uh, overview. Like, when you, like how you got introduced to it like oh yeah you know, why you keep coming back just in general well you uh you uh popped on some demon souls you're welcome thank you <laughs> i really appreciate that we we're probably like 12 <laughs> uh, maybe 11 shit i mean we we're we we're little babies and i was like this is dope and then i thought it was too hard uh i don't think i even i don't think i beat it uh but then dark souls came out and I was like, this looks like the greatest shit of all time. And then I got obsessed and had to go back to Demon's Souls afterwards. And then yeah. the rest is history. I mean, now now I'm playing through all the Kingsfield games. Uh, so I'm, I'm just a full-on From Software simp at this point. <laughs> <laughs> John, what about you? Uh, From Soft is uh, Pappy, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, I bought... I saw, I remember specifically seeing Demon Souls on G4 on X Play. Holy shit. Yeah. I remember seeing the level with the dragon running across the bridge, and they're being like, this game's hard as shit. And I was like, oh, I kind of dig it. Yeah. Or I bought it 60 bucks, just like on a whim. And I spent, I probably spent eight hours on the first level of Boletaria. Actually, I, I, I got least for like a 12 year old. Like, yeah, I died many, many times. But I was like super into it. Loved it. Uh, had an uncle that like weirdly enough like was like really good at the game and <laughs> showed me a bunch of tricks. I mean, I didn't know how to look up things on the internet back then. So he was like the only way I really beat the game. <laughs> he was like, get the fire sword in the uh, uh, mining area. And I was like, Dude, oh, that was that was the exact tip you gave me when I got there. You're like, dude, get that fucking <laughs> right. fire sword. <laughs> Yeah, because we didn't know how to level up shit or do anything. Nope. At all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, remember, I don't think I even knew how to, like, upgrade weapons or any. I think I vaguely knew how to level up, but, like, the weapons was just... I didn't even find the second uh, level up dude, uh, Blackstone Ed? I forgot his name, but the guy, yeah, the, the other guy that levels up your weapons and can do the boss weapons, too. I didn't even find him. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I, me and you probably just had like a weak ass scimitar and tried to beat the game the first time. It was a mess. Yeah. But uh, fell in love with that game. Probably, I did end up beating it. I just had to use summons. Yeah. Or else it would have just straight up been impossible. Like I didn't even know what this that this there was a soul level grab that the final boss did. He did that to me at least like fifteen times. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know what it meant. So then Dark Souls came out. And that was the first, like, community experience for us. Like, yeah. you played it. All of our, like, we had, like, a small group. We all played it at the same time. And we were just, like, talking to each other about it all the time. And it was a really great experience. And pretty much since then, yeah, all we've had, like, a good, like, friend group. Like, usually most of these games, like, we buy first day. And, like, we all kind of, like, run through that first playthrough together and stuff. Yes, we have our little microcosm of nerds, and we all go wild over the shit. Yeah, and if you get us all into a, a new like a room together while playing it for like nine hours with like, it, I swear to God, we could probably create like a Mountain Dew fun guy. Oh yeah, for sure. And like all the 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 sweaty, the, the yeah, it's it's the, not the, pretty. The smaller and more cramped the room, the better the experience. <laughs> Especially with Arizona <laughs> heat. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, the smell is half the fun. It's, it adds some realism. Yeah, this is the smell it's, of a dark root basin. <laughs> it's 4D, dude. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I think we can get ready, like get started. I, I don't like the way this uh, starts because it's super. I feel like this is pretty. I mean, all of, all of these games are going to be heavy-handed, but I feel like this being the most recent and the biggest game, this is like super heavy-handed. I mean, but what what if we? I guess we do have to do them in order, huh? Well, I mean, we could just start. Do you want to do chronological order, like when, from when they release? Would that be weird? Yeah, that no, that makes sense actually. So you start off with so Demon too. Souls. Yeah, I mean, it's not a fucking question for Demon Souls. That's for you. That's the only one that I am. I was one hundred percent certain I knew what yours is. Everything else, like I can maybe be off by like one or two, maybe, but I knew Demon Souls was gonna be. I mean, it's, I haven't even looked at your tier list. Yeah, it's yeah, obvious. It's Demon Souls. I mean, come on. It's it's S tier. It's what what transformed the games from Shadow Tower slash Kingsfield into the Souls genre, as we know, and um, I mean, literally created an entire genre of games that now rivals shit like Call of Duty. Um, yeah. And did so with style and grace, and a very nice soundtrack. And um, oh, yeah soundtrack actually to get myself in the mood for this <laughs> made, made in australia oh hell yeah <laughs> that's can... like my like my uh from soft uh from soft tier making foreplay <laughs> <laughs> Spe speaking of which did you hear that uh that kingsfield song i sent you no i have not yet jesus christ dude it's it's basically like early made in australia it's like um Fuck. yeah it's, it's good anyway no but there's so much demon souls is such a i mean it's such a unique i think the, the thing that like draws us back to it, it's like such a unique atmosphere for sure yes like every single level is so densely atmospheric it like it feels like an entire like each area each zone is like an entire like dark fantasy novels worth of like lore and like history and like atmosphere exploration they really cram so much into like such a like singular like tightly knit package indeed it's, insane. indeed. It, it's honestly insane just to like the how many of the tropes also uh from the first demon souls have continued to live on in eternity like i mean to this yeah. day like the the main formula for the types of levels you get in souls games is straight from demon souls uh yep I mean, literally everything about all these games is straight from Demon Souls. Without Demon Souls, it would not exist. Yep, it's and like just the the making of it been so fascinating too. Being like a failed project, it being originally in first person. I guess there was like some things I've heard about Sony specifically hiring them to make a Oblivion clone. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was yeah, it was Kingsfield. It was basically Kingsfield Five, but Sony wanted them to cash cash in on the whole Bethesda style. So uh, from from I think what we understand, uh, it was basically a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Which then... might have been might have been a beautiful disaster, honestly. It's still, I, I, I don't. I mean, I haven't played a bad from software game. I know they exist, but. Even, like, the disasters they make are kind of interesting in some sense. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i I'm literally, I'm, I'm pro, I mean, any day now, I'm going to start making a, a Kingsfield trilogy video. Uh, so, <laughs> it's just a matter of time no, now. Definitely. Mm. All right. Hey, all right, how about, before we move on, favorite level? Can you even do it? Mm, it's it's a toss-up between Latria and uh, Valley of Defilement. No, oh, which... Shrine of Storms, though. No, Valley. Of... <laughs> it's Vi it's Valley of Defilement or Latria. I'll just I'll just say Latria. Are you saying that like uh, three one and then five one, or just like the whole the whole zone the in whole, general? The whole zone. Mm -hmm. I, although, if we're going for gotcha. favorite specific levels, um, I think I think it would still be Latria five two probably. Yeah, five two. I still remember the. The elevators and like seeing the corpses of the enemies that are pushed off of the little like alleys or like the bridges in uh oh not five two sorry i was thinking three two three two that's my bad five two though the classic the probably still the best poison swamp the original and the best poison swamp still i mean blight town really does 
really does it's give very it a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it, it really just comes down to the vibe, uh, and the vibe uh, from that swamp particularly is even more dire and poisonous and ugly, but also beautiful at the same time. Like that that swamp was like Blight Town and Tomb of Giants combined originally. I can't. I yeah. don't. I don't know if I didn't have the brightness up enough. I couldn't see shit. No, you can't. I had really no idea where so I was going. <laughs> oh, like eventually now, like I'm not a child and i can make up like okay there's like a little path there's like little lights but i just would get fucking lost like i would get uh most of my playthroughs for demon souls would end up with me stuck on flame lurker stuck on man eater stuck oh. on valley of the filement part two <laughs> That's... and that was like the hard bridge i had to pass and i didn't even know you can only you can kill one of the lord bosses and you can beat the game you don't even have to beat those guys if you don't want to are you serious yeah, as soon as, uh, at least I'm like 99% sure. That's yeah, you only need to be, you only need to beat one of the final bosses and then oh, yeah, one three opens up. Yeah. Yep. Rad. No, oh, it's so good. Anyway. About Demon Souls. And, and of course, the Nexus, of course. Uh, maybe, oh, maybe the last God. point is probably, I mean, to this day, still the best hub area of any Souls game. Of any FromSoft game, honestly. I mean, it's like, I mean, I haven't played every FromSoft game at this point, but it's looking like uh, the Nexus is, is really something special uh, in terms of just pure atmosphere, vibe, design, just everything about it. Color scheme, characters in it, uh, music, uh, functionality in terms of story. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Like the seek, like the climbing up the stairs and finding the weird like character ranking stuff so yeah. interesting Ew, it felt like a like it was a secret but it was just there <laughs> I, remember, I remember like what if i keep going up and i was like well, there's something up here <laughs> dude that was like one of the things that really inspired me to beat it like the first time i beat it is like the, the you see online... all those cool fucking dudes too. yeah i'm like i want to be that cool dude <laughs> with two swords yeah, and it was all like there had like the local and like global ratings, so you can see like what the f like you first start the game and you're just like I am the most basic like weak ass knight, and you see these like you see the what's it called the fucking uh, Sauron looking motherfucker. The, yeah. <laughs> like, you see him, and you see like usually the two like double dragon uh, the great sword. Oh yeah, the, the dragon bone like, smasher. Oh, <laughs> dragon bone smasher. It doesn't get much. Talk. Doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> no, it does not. Literally, the original Big Smashy. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. So good. All ten right. Ten out of ten. Yeah, it's a ten out of ten. It's a life-changing, artist like artistic achievement. It's completely changed the way I look at games, play games, and think of video games as like an entire medium. Pretty much. Yeah, it's it's the it's uh, good. <laughs> Indeed. Well, should be so they have Dark Souls and Dark Souls remastered. I don't know how I feel about it's the same. Separating these two, it's the fucking same thing. Let's just pick, just pick the just, picture you like, like better. The Dark Souls one, the picture, the that picture better. Yeah, the weird blue knight. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a weird blue knight fan. Blue knight's cool. All right, so. We can't just put every goddamn thing to S. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Don't, don't I worry. I haven't, I haven't seen your tier list yet, but I'm tempted to. <laughs> uh, but, uh... I think, right, how many categories? So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, uh... <laughs> Oh God! Why did, I, I should have. I should have gone. Now all of a sudden, I'm having like cold feet. <laughs> and I believe in you. All right, it's here. It's an A. All right. It's an A. And so, and so it's that. It's so damn question. close to an S for me, but it's still an A. See, in, in my opinion, if Demon Souls is Jesus, Dark Souls <laughs> is the Bible. Um. <laughs> Like you can't, you kind of can't really like, especially after playing Dark Souls ag again and seeing how well, really it holds up, uh, compared to all the other games. Um, it's 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 another one of those games like Demon Souls where it's like, maybe it's not as original and fresh as Demon Souls. It's not like 
revolutionary quite in the same way uh but it completely codified the experience like thanks to dark souls we now have like 20 other games uh that follow that formula and knock it out of the park yeah there's a a good uh i saw i forgot i think there's like a game designer pod, uh, there's something i saw like an image where it basically it's very simple image it basically compared to like what makes a game unique versus what gives a game broad appeal and that's just like a balance that all games are kind of trying to like well i mean most games are trying to balance in some sense from soft is very much more about like having the strong like artistic integrity first and then you know like kind of playing with what makes it like a little bit more broad appeal i think dark souls does have more broad appeal than demon souls yeah but I mean, it that's... does it in like the best possible way and it is completely so like a uh, uniquely like artistic achievement while having like a broader fan base having like a broader uh i think a, a bigger audience than demon souls and it, i think that's something we see now with the demon souls remake too is that like you see like current souls fans play it and they're like this is the worst game in the series this is not very fun the bosses are lame or like you know they don't they like run past the whole level <laughs> Jesus Christ, people play it like that? Uh, I, uh, at least I've seen it before. At least the general discourse I've heard oh. is that Demon Souls is still kind of like the worst in the series. Jesus Christ, these people... I, You know, I think that's maybe the difference between uh, maybe our perspective. And, and you may be tempted to say it's just nostalgia uh, bringing Demon Souls all the way up there. But, but nah. um, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, what draws me to the souls games in general isn't just pure mechanics and 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 shit like that it's the it's like one of the things that from software does better than anybody else is creating a vibe and an atmosphere um, and telling a cool ass story in kind of an esoteric mysterious way and uh, that's something that demon souls does extremely well uh, compared to the other games yeah no absolutely like i remember I've never been too much of like a deep dive into the lore kind of person, but I remember just having that overwhelming feeling you play in Demon Souls, like every story is its own level. There's so much, like that's what I meant by like, there's so much packed into each area and like, it really feels like so thoroughly thought out. I think that might have, like that does seem like possibly the kind of Miyazaki stamp, like it really uh, that kind of, I think, kind of alters maybe, like, from what I've seen of their past games, like, before Demon Souls, like, he really knows how to put that, like, really dense storytelling, environmental design kind of kind of ordeal, which yeah. I think Demon Souls and Dark Souls, that is the, that is, like, Dark Souls world design is the reason why it's like, hey, because I am somebody that might be a little bit more, I'm definitely a little bit more mechanics-focused, and yeah. like my enjoyment of these games in you in some ways like obviously like i think demon souls like blows that out of the water but i actually still like really think it holds up the combat demon souls i think they were getting they were really creative with making challenges with such a simple combat system like all the enemies kind of play on expectations of like enemy animations and like what you expect them to do and then they usually fuck you up like skeletons are just skeletons no they like sonic roll into you and fuck you up in demon souls but yeah. dark souls i feel like actually has worse enemy design and until recently i wasn't really i never really found like a good like like weapon that i was really into with dark souls i kind of felt like i just used whatever was around until like katana's changed my life i <laughs> i i am here to support the Uchi build and or the washing pole and the chaos blade that was I mean you just went through like Dark Souls completely fresh just recently and that was kind of what we were playing with and that was like a fantastic time that was like it really was the combat combat really shined with yeah. those weapons for me well and I think also what I'll say too is that um is that uh one thing that Dark Souls did I think a little bit better than Demon Souls in, in terms of mechanics uh, is just literally the pure polish on on the animations and how your character moves around uh, stuff like that mm. um, not necessarily point. in terms of like enemy design but uh, your character feels like if demon souls is um, you know kind of uh, 
brand new and revolutionary Dark Souls, like I said, really uh, just polishes it up and makes it makes it run a little nicer. I mean, not frame rate wise, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just in terms of how your character feels and the general animations of the weapons, uh, also the the variety of weapons, uh, you know, the variety of spells and magic and pyromancy and stuff like that. Give oh, a lot yeah. more options to work with. Oh yeah, pyromancy was brand new. Yeah, and uh, the DLC added the dark magic too. Dark I magic. About that. Yeah. Mm. Um, the dude, can we just talk about the first time where we rang the we rang both bells and that fucking homie like pulls up in a firelink shrine? I almost quit playing, dude. dude I, <laughs> I, mean, like, he, I, I just saw like a glimpse of him out of my screen, and it's just like that feeling you get when you like you see a bug that's like Ani that you didn't know about. You're like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like, no, yeah, that. I was so upset because he, he ruined this, like, you know, like, Firelink is, like, your safe space. Uh, <laughs> and now and now we have that shit in it. And he, like, and you could hear him. Like, he's, like, snoring or, like, grunting, you know? Like, he's not just, like, he doesn't ever go away. <laughs> yeah, he's real. He's real sir nasty. That's for sure. He really is. Yeah. But I think... Gross. Can we just talk about? I think uh, a lot of people listen to because I I keep up with these games discourse. I don't know. I, I know so much about them. There's so much to talk about. I really enjoy this, like hearing different different opinions and stuff like that. But I think a lot of people. I think I've heard so much is like people want talking about like wanting from software to make that kind of world design again. But not only that, like the level of like the because Demon Souls, there is like a. I mean, exploration is a part of all of their games in like different ways. Yeah. Demon Souls exploration was basically usually like I'm finding shortcuts, finding like interacting with the world in unique ways. Either be like hitting something and a chain falls apart, finding like different objects that become shortcuts. Like, yeah. like they think there's some like pretty interesting ones. But uh, D Dark Souls I think really expanded upon and probably more so than I mean the other games is just like that level of uh, exploration as like being away from home scared crying that's a really good thing and i think like well like that's something i noticed now like when i played like i knew like okay i'm time to go to the depths i'm gonna buy a purging stone i'm gonna make sure i can repair my armor my equipment before i go down there like i had like all these things like set up because i know like if i'm going in for like the long run yeah like, it's it's deep i'm not gonna be back in fire link for a while uh, uh see ya Crestfallen Warrior, peace out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you after I ring the second bell in Blight Town. It could be like five hours later. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, honestly, that's something that pretty much none of them have actually managed to recreate. Uh, Bloodborne om almost gets there, kind of. But um, I think in terms of just how tight um, like the whole world design is as a whole, um and the kind of metroidvania quality of it um and also just in terms of like the freedom you have right at the beginning of the game to set up your build if you're like you know a returning player um is really just kind of unmatched like i don't think any of the other games uh get to that um quite as well yeah actually no you can do you could go to new londo get uh you get the uh transient curses there's a way to get enough of them to beat that level yeah. If you kill the dude on top of the church, he gives you the thing to unlock the four kings. So he, right as you get to Firelink, you can go down there and kill four kings if you truly want to do that to yourself. Well, if you killed Sif, you, you need the ring. You need oh, that's the oh yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's ring. still that's that's still before, still before, uh, the two guys, Ornstein and Sneeg. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you can still king. Yeah, you could kill uh, four kings before mm. Arnstein can come out. Yeah, I love shit like that. You know, a little like, like in game, like bound, like doing things certainly in different orders. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what's fun. That's a really great strength of Dark Souls, and that's why it has to be an S. Honestly, is just because um, that's something that is really special about it that none of the other games have quite um, hit on the same way. The only reason why it's on this, I'm arbitrarily uh, limiting myself to two games per spot. Really? I, I don't know. I'm just going to be, I'm going to be kind of, um, it's going to be, t it's a from software tier list. It's going to be top heavy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
That's just the nature of it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, well, uh, shall we? Mm. Oh, one last note about Dark Souls. Yes. Uh, fantastically memorable characters. So much so mm. that that they kept bringing them back over and over again. But only in this game were they completely original, new, and fresh, and made sense in their setting. Um, yeah. Easily the most memorable think, characters. I think they really haven't skipped it a little bit. I don't think they do memorable characters as well until Elden Ring, actually. Yeah. I'd say all the other games are, are in different ranges from either like, ah, eh, to really good, but Elden Ring is like on, on that same level of like every single NPC character is like super memorable, super have like a amazingly memorable design. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like obviously you got the biggest like meme praise and praise the sun. But I mean like that that level of memory can only be created from something that was like legitimately great to begin with. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Nobody would have gave Bobby. a gave a shit if he wasn't amazing. Bobby, you're going back to the Richard Dawson, uh, or is it Dawson or Dawkins? Oh, I don't remember. It's uh, the fucking atheist, uh, guy? atheist, atheist guy. The definition of meme, as in like a uh, significant cultural like artifact. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, memes like, aren't, aren't always that. His obviously. Yeah. yeah. And in this case, that is the definition. But uh, obviously, memes are usually pure shit, uh, which yeah, is what makes exactly. Praise the Sun so special. Yeah, definitely. Because it was like uh, uh, a very, uh, I mean, like Demon Souls had like its moments of beauty, but they were still usually pretty fucked up. But Dark Souls kind of hits you with like, it's fucked up. This is a hard game. You beat that first boss, and it like, rel like, oh, like embellishes you with like a beautiful sight and this funny character that's like telling you to look at the sun. He gives you the ability to summon for now on. Uh, it gives you so, like, he gives you so much hope, and you're just like, well, shit, okay, I guess I'll go over there, and then the dragon fire breathes you to death, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he's he set the set the standard for jolly cooperation, he literally yeah. invented the phrase. Um, uh, yeah, and set the standard for, like, what online interactions were going to be like uh, between him and, like, Dark Wraiths and uh, the what are those guys? The Blue Moons or whatever? The Moon Blades? Dark Sentinels? Dark, dark, dark Moon didn't... Blades. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't fuck with Covenant. You can't tell. Well, yeah, uh, I, I can tell. Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> uh, but those basically all set uh, the standard for various types of um, online interactions you're going to have for the rest of the games, you know, which is very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I love that shit. Indeed. Yeah, and, uh, I think we can very clearly state our position on summoning is a great feature of these games. Absolutely, yeah. Like absolutely essential. Yep, uh, part of what makes them so charming, and it really helps pull together that sense of community. The message system, the, the message system pretty much only really exists for like that first playthrough, but it's so good for that first playthrough. It's really good. There's some, I mean, there's so much shit I just would never find out. And it, th th they found a way to be like, well, how could we like just plainly tell the player, hey, do this without like, but still make it feel like have that spontaneity and like the sense of accomplishment of like, you know, digging deep, exploring the world, like understanding things, like just looking at messages just says hit a wall. It's like, all right, that's like the 400th one I've seen 99% of the time. It doesn't do shit. And then you hit it and you're like, oh, now I'm in, uh, what's it called? Ash Lake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and that is just also just an excellent callback uh to the kingsfield series and that and that uh, scenario where where oftentimes entire levels are hidden behind not just two invisible walls but maybe like six so <laughs> no that's that is a good that's another i think uniquely from software feature for sure even like Volcano Manor, you got to do some funky shit to get in there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's not exactly straightforward. Yeah, that's a huge area. You can either, well, you have to roll. Not only attack, you have to roll into that wall, right? I believe so, because you can't attack in that area. Like you have to roll through a lizard oh, yeah. wall to uh -huh. get in there, or you got to go to the bottom of the Hogwarts, get killed by the adjudicator, and then 
if you have you done that before yeah but even then it doesn't actually put you into like the uh volcano manor proper there is there is one spot if you jump yeah you can survive and head into volcano manor yeah but if you follow the path you know that is most obvious you'll just end up in altus plateau so i, I yeah, really love the obscurity, i mean it's still but... sick yeah, yeah it's really cool yeah all right should we i don't even know how i feel i, I feel like i we i kind of just want to write dark souls 2 scholar the first sin you know i mean back when dark souls 2 released that we played it that actually but... is more of a more of a like that's more worth separating i think than remastered yeah, definitely because Dark Souls, actually, yeah, I, I can separate. I can separate this. Should we talk about them individually? Um, sure. But yeah, maybe. But first, I'll just go ahead and rate both of them. Oh. Interesting. Yes. Very interesting. We're we're flipped. Oh, are we still? Oh my god. I like. I think I like the original better. I mean, from, I, from what I can, I can see remember, that. but I, I haven't, you know, exactly replayed it recently, but mm -hmm. um, most of the changes in Scholar of the First Sin, I, I don't really get, honestly. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the cool thing about it is that it does add an extra final boss, uh, but other than that, um, I actually prefer the way the Hide Knights were in the original. Uh, I prefer how there's uh, less, um, less of the stone guys uh you know slapping around and i um uh, and i much prefer how you can actually kill that one really important vendor in um uh what is that place called the lost bastille uh because in the original i'm pretty sure uh those zombie guys that explode are actually fully aggro in that room uh whereas in scholar it seems like they're just chilling <laughs> oh i didn't know that oh yeah, I think they are just chilling. I think you have to aggro them for them to get pissed off. I yeah. kind of love that, Dark Souls 2. That's actually, that sounds like a feature that should be in Scholar of the First Sin is have an important vendor in a room full of aggroed exploding guys that respawn every single time. It's a, that sounds like Scholar of the First Sin. That is like a summary of what I love about Scholar of the First Sin. It's completely like doubling down on your own bullshit. Yeah. It's like the best way I could describe it. All the complaints that like all... A lot of the nerds had about too too many enemies, too many gang fights. Just like, <laughs> like just like laughed at him. Just like, how about you fall through a, a hole, get six red phantoms, get bows like from a mile away, you get uh, terrain that's fucked up. Like, I love that shit. <laughs> it's like it's totally like the rearranging of all the areas, levels. I think. It's really fun. Obviously, they did do some like resolution work. The 60 frames per second for like consoles is like really nice. Yeah. But Dark Souls 2, actually, I just recently bought it for PS3 and it actually runs really well. Nice. I, was, I was like really shocked. Yeah. Dark like, Souls 2 did run a lot better than the original Souls, but I, I'm not yeah. considering like technical. Stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Right. It's, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, yeah. Think... It's like, dude, if you want to play it, just uh, get it on the PC and there you go. It doesn't matter what version you're playing, it'll run fine. I think uh, Scholar of the First Sin it's definitely just kind of speaks to me like more so mechanically than the previous two games for sure I, I love the combat I loved how slow like tactical like I loved how the enemies track you better I love like yeah I just I, I it's the game out of pretty much I think the whole series that I feel the urge to go back and play you're just super weird. You're really gonna like Kingsfield, honestly. <laughs> if you ever, if you ever play it, uh, like Dark Souls Two is easily, well, not easily the most Kingsfield. Uh, strangely enough, actually, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls Two, actually, like follows almost the exact same pattern. Strangely, of a um, level design as Kingsfield mm -hmm. One, Two, and Three. Um, one is five separate floors that you warp between. Dar uh, Kingsfield Two is literally dark souls um where it's just kind of like a spaghetti metroidvania thing and uh kingsfield 3 is dark souls 2 where it's like kind of kind of non-linear um but in general kind of has some specific paths you go through yeah yeah no it's much more of a 
each level is definitely more linear. It's like boom, 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 new environment, new kind of enemies, kind of like it's very, it's very video gamey. When Demon Souls and Dark Souls feel very like real lived in worlds most of the time. Yeah. There's some shit like in Dark Souls. I like the last playthrough we did. Like that area when you go into the what's it called Lost Isolith, and yeah. you just see all those like angry looking dudes in the lava at the very beginning, and they're just like standing there like awkwardly arranged. Like that shit's good. <laughs> That's like, there's so some good. there's some like mega video game shit in there, but Dark Souls 2 really like it's straight up Super Mario 64. Like so many areas. Yeah, it's and um, yeah. It's like it the I think there's two ways that. I've kind of come to like describe Dark Souls 2. It's like the greatest PS2 game ever made. But also like when people say uh, it's a good game but not a good Souls game, I would think of it more of like the old From Software, like pre Demon Souls, like that team making a Souls game. Is yes, it's kind a of good, the lens to look through it. It's a good From Software game. Mm hmm. Yes. Um, and it's uh it's definitely more Kingsfield in terms of like the way the environments look and how just gamey uh everything is. Uh even I mean, even the way um hidden walls work is brought back directly from Kingsfield, uh where you oh. just like press the button instead of hitting it. Um and yeah. uh yeah, and just a lot of the way the levels are laid out and feel, um and a lot of the tricks they use is very, very uh, very Kingsfieldy. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just cool. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, some really cool. Um, this is the game that really, really opened up PvP uh, and build variety, and also, of course, added oh um, yeah stance stancing and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very pretty at times when it was not very ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's some real like the disparity between some areas versus others is like entire like generate like different generations of like console generations like yeah some backgrounds look like the high res ps1 and then you have like the the, the dragon area. Like, final dragon area that's just like gorgeous it's like the first ps4 area is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah it's like what the, like it's so all over the place it's it really is kind of a mess but it's a beautiful uh fun adventurous experimental mess Yes, and bonfire it's... aesthetics. Like, there's so much like weird, like really unique shit that they incorporated in the game that didn't really come back until Elden Ring. Yes, at all, which is which is sad. Power stancing being a prime example. Yeah, power stancing is freaking brilliant. Throw something on my desk. It's I mean, so it's, good. It's just so obvious too. It's like literally since Demon Souls, we've been like putting two weapons on just because even if it's not very good and finally it's it's viable and then they take it away from us for however many games uh, well all right bloodborne bloodborne has a pass trick weapons yeah yeah trick weapons sure dark souls 3 they did the like they kind of like half-assed it dark souls 3 is dumb yeah they, they, <laughs> they, sh they should have just had it as a feature but instead of like making sp specific weapons for it but yeah, that's but... my opinion. At least they tr sort of tried. Dark Souls Three. Uh, I mean, Dark. I'm a bad. Dark Souls Two. I think. Yeah. You, dark build variety is definitely a huge factor. I think there's. I mean, that's. They were just working so hard towards like uh, broad, uh, epic scope. You know, starting you off weak as shit. Like the yeah. weakest you are in any of these games, you are in Dark Souls Two. You can't do shit. You can't even dodge roll. Yeah. <laughs> You can't, you, the, all the even like your base character movement stats are fucked. Like you're, it's, you're so bad. I love it. It builds you up. It has more bosses than any of the games until Elden Ring. More weapons, more armor sets, fashion souls. Three gigantic DLCs. Yeah, the DLCs are fucking huge. Yeah. Mm. Uh, also... We can talk about that a little bit. I. Uh, I am a Dark Souls 2 DLC supporter. Yes. Oh, and uh, the I... aesthetic, of course. Oh God, yes. Like when it when it wins, it really wins, and when it loses, it it really loses. <laughs> you get a uh, Shrek. You get Shrek Swamp. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, like <laughs> and the, the fucked up windmill that's metal you burn with a torch. <laughs> yeah, uh, the the funny looking mannequin face, which uh, is still my favorite helmet, uh, regardless of how funny it looks. It's um, fantastic. Yeah, um, but uh, also the the theming of it, the the vibes, the fact that it's about more about the undead curse than like grand, you know, uh, yeah. cycles of history and stuff. It's just about um dementia as, um, as we've uh, often said you know and and the depression of, of going hollow and uh forgetting where you are and not knowing about anything which is very consistent too with a lot of the earlier uh kingsfield games it's just a lot more uh in your face uh than usual which, yeah which... i think that's the thing about this game like i mean i didn't also so didn't really follow the lore much but thematically there's so many there's much more up they're much more upfront thematically yes with you know what they're trying to say what they're going for all the little stories feel very purposeful like you know the map map man who's trying to make a map and then he's forgetting why he's doing it and then at the end he has his finished product that he was spending like his you know countless years on that he doesn't even know what for. Same with the shop. Same with the, you know, blacksmith looking for his daughter. He's literally, she's just literally been just chilling on a rock outside, yep, hanging yep. out. Yeah, yep. like I, I really enjoyed all of that. And uh, the characters that don't uh, become horribly depressed and, and hollowed and and forget everything become douchebags, generally, and don't just necessarily <laughs> uh, just end up dead, which is the FromSoft classic. Uh, they they have a couple other outcomes. Uh, I like how they split patches. Uh, very 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 um, risky move to split patches into two separate characters, but I think it works. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Cat NPC, just like Cat that's NPC. one like Dark Souls Two, a game. Cat NPC talks about the lore. Literally, just the lore master is a cat. Yeah, I mean, what's not to like about that? Yeah. The only thing they should have done different, which I, I showed you a picture of this in the art book for Dark Souls 2, the the maiden character was once just like a little kid. I think that would have been a really great change because I think the maiden in Dark Souls 2 is really boring. Uh, yeah, she is really boring, but if they made her a kid, then she wouldn't be uh, the resident wife. And so I think that's probably uh, probably the big... I think, it, I think if she were, it would uh, justifiably problematic. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, but I think um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, in none of the none of the games, you really know what the fuck is going on with the fire keepers. Demon Souls, you know more than the other ones. Yeah, that's true. But um, I think at the end of the Straight day, up murderer. Yeah, um, but you know, it's like you know, do we have this and you know, actual backstory for this character, or do we just have it be uh, the waifu character that? Uh, players can imprint onto and kind of come up with their own thing about and um it probably took too many resources to actually do anything more advanced than that yeah, yeah so it's fine well, that's fair enough it's yeah, it's yeah. Not, dark not, souls 2 dark souls 2 not any better or worse than dark souls 3 uh i mean the emerald herald character specifically oh okay okay i was just like if i had a face cam on right now it would have been he would have no. <laughs> specifically <laughs> been the i was like excuse me no We'll get to Dark Souls 3 when we get to Dark Souls 3. Yeah. Oh shit, that's next. Or no, 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 it's not Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Yeah. Okay, Bloodborne. Mm. Alright, me. Ooh. If I'm only doing two per, I gotta really reevaluate here. Yeah, because yeah, Bloodborne came after. Dude, it was Dark Souls 2 in 2014, Bloodborne in 2015, Dark Souls 3 in 2016. Like, it was just fucking ridiculous. Yeah. We were just spoiled little baby gamers Pretty much. those three years i don't even think i played other games no it's just all really Souls time yeah those were the all games. right i think bloodborne is great <laughs> it is great it's a great game it's it's um the only reason it's not an a for me is just because it it doesn't appeal particularly to my uh, what I enjoy about these games, really. Mm -hmm. um, at least in terms of playstyle and in terms of um, like I, I do like the story. I, do, I like the story a lot, 
but uh, I think we were having that conversation, uh, and and it does fit the gothic theme very well because that is the aesthetics of, um, uh, of gothic architecture and gothic style is to be really overblown and over detailed, and there's just shit everywhere. Um, but it's um, man, I don't know. But the DLC though, I might have to put it in a DLC created by the Dark Souls Two team. Yes, I agree. With yeah, the, the Ludwig fight, honestly, almost single-handedly makes it go into the A category. But uh, there's a lot of bosses that are just kind of, you know, um, big beast guy again, you know, uh, that are varying degrees of good. Um, Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'm destroying my world mid-tier range. I'm sorry for interrupting. Go Yeah, you, you're going to have to. Um, yeah, because I can't even handle... Bloodborne being at sea. That doesn't even make any goddamn sense. No, it doesn't okay. make any sense. No, it, there's... I've had so much fun with it. It's the game I've probably replayed the absolute least. Yeah, it's not very... In the series, besides one other that shall not be named yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really hard. Mm. Uh, uh, let's see, can I add another tier? Actually, oh shit. Yeah, what can. did I just do, dude? I oh, did you... <laughs> you actually can Oh, I see, I see. Okay, uh, this Bloodborne gets a special, special rating uh, of B+. Plus. Uh, add robot. There we go. Okay. Okay, it's just uh... What? <laughs> I don't fucking know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay, you know what? Fuck, uh, delete. Uh, whatever. Oh, it deleted my Bloodborne, too! Oh, never mind. Okay. It's just an A. It's an A. It's an A. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Nope. Uh, I, I don't like how it pigeon pigeonholes you into uh, one play style. I think this is when the game games were getting really obsessed with being fast action games, whereas... Um, is a cool addition to the series, but I feel like has never been really the point uh, of these games. Um, like, I think uh, Sekiro, uh, I'm on the record saying Sekiro, I think does what Bloodborne was trying to do much better uh, by yeah. completely removing uh, the RPG elements, pretty much. Uh, because in, in Bloodborne, they just feel like an extra on top, you know, of the, of the game, like just a relic of the past games. Well, um, uh, it's it's meant to be played more like Sekiro. Um, obviously, the art style is fantastic. Uh, not necessarily my style, because I think it's a little bit too... It's uh, like... Again, it's like with Dark Souls 2's Shrek Swamp. Like, I get it's supposed to be gross and green, but it's just so... It's just so <laughs> much, you know? Yeah. And, and at the time, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft was so trendy, you know, it felt like... You know, usually they, they have a very unique kind of um, individual sense of artistic identity. Uh, whereas Bloodborne really went for like, hey, you know, London and H.P. Lovecraft and werewolves. And, you know, it's very, very, um, very trendy uh, for the time. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a, I, I like how you put that. I think it is a little, doesn't have the same... I mean, like, all the other games are, I mean, besides Sekiro, are just kind of set in, like, a very Western fantasy influence, but still, they kind of do a lot, like, Tower of Latria would be, like, the closest thing to something in Bloodborne, but for some reason, Tower of Latria feels more unique still. Bloodborne, I yeah. think, really does kind of hold on to the, the specific uh, archetypes of like Victorian horror and then the uh, gothic and then uh, Lovecrafty like and it, it kind of Victorian and gothic yeah yeah but it it really uh, it does play with the archetypes a lot maybe even a little bit too much without developing it's the closest thing I think that makes it like it that the that unique style is definitely the whole hunter effect like the yeah that's the thing that I really like that still made it feel a little, a little bit more like Unique. despite the less uh yeah you feel like they create this character the mythos of what like a hunter is in this world and like the gameplay and everything that you can do 
really fits that like your trick weapon like the special like really satisfying sound effects and like different combos you can do with it like it being a trick you have the the first game that had the uh build up r2 attacks where you could like hold it down longer mm -hmm. blood vials kind of like the worst though it's kind of the worst of, like, yeah yeah even like i like demon souls more me too. Which is pretty bad. <laughs> but like Demon Souls is like uh even though uh, I mean uh it costs resources, you can stock up a lot on the weak ones, but then like mid battle if you're panicking, you're thinking, all right, which one do I use? Do I use something that costs more? Do I use something that there's a little bit to it? But born they uh just kinda I mean you can buy them eventually cheap, but then having to like grind again there was multiple times where I like had to kinda grind for blood files when I was like stuck on like Ludwig or Yeah. Boss. And that's that's pretty lame. It is I lame. Think the, I think the best thing I love about the more horror aesthetic because I am a huge fan of horror aesthetics, not a big fan of horror games. Uh -huh. Is the kind of like especially the first half it's just like kind of camp it up a little bit yeah. like there's some like resident evil 4 like area kind of shit that i was like a fan of yeah it but, definitely uh, definitely camps it up at the beginning uh mm -hmm. i think one of my some of my favorite elements of it are um are the hypogean gowl because that's when you really start to feel the horror set in before yeah. it's like it's like ooh, it's kind of spooky ooh. uh and yeah then, hypogean gowl's a good mix yeah and then you, and, like the skeleton fucking chess guys i love those guys yeah they just like pop out they're like a little uh like a uh, pop goes the weasel and they're like, <laughs> like those guys are fantastic <laughs> and um of course there's the um uh the laser uh amygdalas in that area which i think is honestly pretty mm. pretty representative of the of the the whole thing going on with bloodborne is it's like it's uh they've they've taken these ideas to to an extreme uh, and really just blasted them in your face um, in a way that isn't necessarily subtle a lot of the time, uh, but is still pretty cool. Yeah. No, like, I think it's... Uh, I mean, it's a... Like I said in the very beginning, it's a great game. I do think uh, it's missing some of the things that make the others, like, really stand out, like, like really special, like, to our hearts, but, like... Anytime, like, yeah, I hop in Bloodborne and play it for a little bit, like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna do the DLC again someday because DLC slaps. Yeah, and it does. It has the best, um, best introduction for the Moonlight Sword in any of those. Uh, oh from yeah, soft games, which gets it a lot of points. Yeah, so just the like triple like the Ludwig, Lady Maria, Orphan of Cause. Yeah, Jack, all, like all those levels are. The levels are mostly pretty good. I like I like those areas. The really the cr like crepid looking like almost like melted Victorian kind of shit in the first. Then you have the like a <laughs> messed up insane asylum kind of place. Then you have the old swamp. Or not the swamp, the little fishing town. Yeah, I really like the fishing town. It's probably my favorite. Yeah, uh, love the area where you just go down that ladder and you got those like the two most aggressive crazy motherfuckers. In the entire game, <laughs> coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, those those guys are, those guys are tough. I that's like a, them. Yeah, that's a good time there. Yeah, definitely. Orphan of Cause is a great fight. I think Ludwig was the the. I was stuck on Ludwig for like months. Actually, I had a really hard time beating Ludwig. Really? Yeah, I think uh, Orphan of Cause too. Both of those two gave me like I I haven't played video games as much back then. I think I. 2015, I don't know what I was up to. I wasn't playing video games that much. I'm honestly... I don't even really think I played Bloodborne until 2016. I didn't even have a PS4 yet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember, I, I, I got one that, that I think that year, like, Christmas time. I was just like, gotta get Bloodborne. That's the only game I had on it for, like, two years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, remember, I do remember that, specifically. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, uh, it's it's a good game, but uh, it's hard to put your my finger on it exactly. But it's um, it's just not as magical as the others. I know to some people it yeah. is, but those are probably the people who really love home stuff. <laughs> I'm, probably, I'm, make, I'm making enemies here. I probably shouldn't say that, but uh, you know, people who really have this like obsessive, uh, kind of trendy into H.P. Lovecraft kind of thing. Uh, I 
think that yeah. shit really appeals to those uh, people who hold that aesthetic close to their heart. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. Uh, gameplay, it it was it was experimenting in a new way, but I just don't think it it made it all the way uh, to where it could have been. Yeah, what's kind of lame about it is uh, it's more it's instead of like I mean it, it, obviously it's more action focused. It's kind of pigeonholing players into a certain type of play yeah. style. But, the, I mean, the thing is, you go back into the other games, you two-hand, you dodge roll, and you're kind of already doing that play style, like, hyper-aggressive, like, staying up and close and, like, personal. Not like Demon's that, Souls. That, that... No, Demon Souls, like, you really kind of, you want your shield more often, like, yeah. and like, you want a bow to, like, draw out certain, like, encounters, stuff like that. Yeah, Dark Souls but 2. Dark Souls, uh... Dark, Souls, Dark, Souls, Dark Souls 2, like, you can definitely just kind of, like... Play more aggressive, play more on the spot. Bloodborne, they have that as the option, like that's like the main encouragement. But I don't, know, I, I, don't I mean, I like, I kind of like the idea of like, I mean, Sekiro, Sekiro was kind of made uh, some aspects of Bloodborne, the the combat of Bloodborne seem, I don't know, like, ah, how do I play it? Yeah, like a midpoint, definitely like a midpoint, like. You're 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 so close. You're getting somewhere. I I also don't really feel like uh, Bloodborne trick weapons are. I mean, there's less of them, obviously. I don't feel like they. Uh, they kind of all end up playing the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel that way in a, in a weird sense. Like there is a variety among among them, but I mean, my favorite was Blades of Mercy, just because yeah. it's just like slashy slash. Of course, like, Lud Ludwig's most... Holy Blade too. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah. There are some classics, but like I see a lot of people just like, oh yeah, Sock Cleaver is my favorite. I'm like, really? <laughs> dude, I, last playthrough I did I was was with the Sock Cleaver up until the end, and I was like, fuck this, dude. I need my I need my sword. I need my big sword. And then the whole game, the whole, the whole game got better. I beat uh, what's it, Orphan of Cause in like two tries. Yeah. All right, I'm ready to I'm ready to move on. Throw in the towel. Bloodborne, great game. GG. Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3. Uh... Besides Demon Souls, the only one that I know exactly what your placement is. Just because really? we've, kind of, we've talked a lot. Oh! I, I could, that makes sense. I'm taking into account its general appeal. Uh, it's not necessarily... Like, this isn't based on my my personal feelings quite as much as an amalgamation between them and... Uh, I think what other people may appreciate about it. Yeah, that's true. I think sort of what we talked about earlier with like Demon Souls in terms of like you like a game with uh, holding on to like its unique ideas without like as, like and then like measuring broad appeal as well. I think they just hit the scale too closely to broad appeal with Dark Souls Three. I think Absolutely. the movement, the gameplay, the environmental design, the linear but there's only really even a couple points in the games where you have in the game where you have like two different even two options to go through it's very it's linear structured it the difficulty curve is very good as a result of this like it's a much more streamlined game than the others it's an extremely safe game it's yeah it's a game that they made after dark souls 2 and bloodborne because they were experimental and people had varying opinions on them, even though people really love Bloodborne and still love it to yeah. this day. I think um, they really wanted to take the ideas that they learned from those two games and and just make a regular ass Souls game that they knew would sell. Yeah, I mean, which it did. I think it sold like ten million copies. Yeah, it's it's. I guess it sold like a shit ton. It's yeah. a lot of people's first Souls game, and I pity yes. those uh, <laughs> those people. Um, <laughs> but because um, it's poisoned their brains <laughs> it, it really has it's uh, because i mean really dark souls 3 has um almost none of what i like from like what i actually really like about from software games uh which yeah, is very little yeah like the vibe of it is just completely whack um it's it's um like i get uh like like the, the strongest uh argument i think for it being thematically and atmospherically cool is just the fact that it is supposed to represent 
uh, the end of the series. The flame is fading. The flame represents um, the spark of creativity, the spark of inspiration. Um, and it's obvious that in this game, even like communicated visually through the color palette, obviously we've talked about that a lot, uh, and through just how safe everything is, that um, the inspiration is kind of gone. And um, mm. and uh, Ashes of Ariandel all but confirms this, uh, with the entire plot being like, hey, this this painting that we made is like rotting away and it fucking sucks. Like, can you please burn it so we can start a new one? Um, that's yeah, basically... and that's it's like the the storyline and the DLC is really beautiful. Actually, I really, I really like the. I mean, that's like the, some of the most upfront and, I mean, the game Dark Souls Three has a lot of meta, meta elements to it, but I think it's best told through that like l that little plot line in the DLC. Yeah, it, it really like if you're if you had any doubts that that was the theme of the game, that confirms it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could really see it, too, like, in terms of enemy designs, just extremely boring. Uh, you know, uh, most of them are basically just retreads of previous enemies. Uh, all the bosses, if they're like, hey, people really liked, liked Artorias. So, basically, all the bosses are just Artorias, all the best bosses. Um, except for Lothric, which is, like, um, pretty original. It's, it's a duo fight, but I actually liked how that was handled. Um, yeah. Osiris is just like a Bloodborne boss. There's a couple of those. Yeah. Um, like it just feels like they took took a greatest hits, you know, from the rest of the series and slapped it in here because uh, they knew that it worked. Yeah, I mean, and it does work. Like we're playing through it right now. I just got to the DLC, and you know, I d I do realize, you know, I've have I've beat the game I think two times before, and then I've had like I checked my like my saves i have like five or six different accounts where like i maybe like a couple hours in and i just stop playing the yeah. beginning is definitely kind of kind of like a lot of people talk i don't know i don't the level design those environmental design and it's like where to color at where to color where to color at there's no color in, in this game for some reason like i remember looking at the other ones like i the first thing i do one of the first things i do i grab binoculars i love just like looking at the different landscapes because you know the, like even like uh let's say like the second level Volteria, like you have that opening in the like castle like walkway you're going through where you see like towns and stuff and it's like super yeah. low polygons but it's like it brought so much uh, world to it and like all the other games that do that dark souls 3 i remember after beating the uh What's it called red flame dude with the onion eye go up like a little bit higher i was like wow i get to look at the world and i just looked at it and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah it doesn't it doesn't make you like excited to go visit anywhere um mm -hmm. i mean if that could just be us because we've played it a few times and we know what to expect and we know that the world yeah. doesn't actually coherently connect like dark souls uh or demon yeah. souls did um it's more like dark souls 2 where it's just kind of like ah fuck it you know this goes here yeah. whatever the beginning there's so many weird like many areas that are sort of starting to make each world like each level kind of connect better which are like the worst <laughs> those are like the low points of the game yeah there's a lot of just like this this area we're gonna call it the crucifixion highway but what it actually is is a fucking hallway to the next area uh, and it's not even like cool and like personality filled like say like the valley of drakes you know which is mm -hmm. basically the same thing uh, but in Soul, in Dark Souls Three, it, it takes all the least fun elements. It's like, what are we gonna put here? I don't know, dude. Just the most generic hollow guy, some dogs. What color will it be? Gray. You know, like it's literally just a like a hallway of bullshit uh, that yeah. wastes your time until you get to the next area. Yeah, and they're really. I mean, we th we mentioned this earlier a little bit about it. Like, even just comparing it, like. Uh, say like Elden Ring, any of like the legacy dungeons, like there are areas I like more than others in Dark Souls 3, but I can't even say, I don't think I could think of a single area in Dark Souls 3 I like as much as any of the legacy dungeons from Elden Ring, like yeah. there's none that really stand out I mean the boss, there are like some boss fights obviously really really stand out, they yeah. seem to put a lot of effort into making like really big, thematic, but like mechanically like engaging boss fights. The boss fights you know, are the best of, part. Yeah. Yeah, I think most people seem to kind of agree on that. Like, like the best watchers are actually really best watchers. Pontiff, 
the, the, the brothers. Brother. Yeah. Brothers. Brothers. Sister Freed. Who's a, who else? Who's in the Red City? Got the two demon twin guys. I love them. Yeah, they're fun. Uh, and of course, and Gale. Obviously, same about Gale. Gale's, Gale's like one a of the best. Massive slapper. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, and honestly, that's Gale. Like that DLC and Gale is what keeps it from being in C, because mm -hmm. uh, Gale is a genuinely uh, unique thing. Uh, like in terms of how you interact with him in the story, and then he like shows up as, as the final boss, and it, and it you know in case you were still somehow confused about what the uh, th thematic uh, that the theme of the game was uh, i mean in that in, in that <laughs> dlc you literally have patches uh kick you down a hole and say have a fine dark soul you know and then and then <laughs> give me your dark soul <laughs> yeah and then gail yeah you find him he's like you're still here give me your fucking dark soul and like Bitch. every everything is just ash like there's nothing left and um it's a really fitting end to the series, uh, way more so than the actual final boss of the game, which is doo doo. Yeah, I mean the actual the final boss of Dark Souls Three is like I just think about it now, like uh, Gideon is actually kind of similar in Elden Ring. It's, yeah, uh, get, get, Gideon uses all the like you know it's just incantation and spell abilities that you've seen or you've picked up, and that's a that's not a that's not a very good fight in Elden Ring. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, no, well, but Dark Souls three, the, was... but it's a difference between uh, like a kind of prelude boss between like Godfrey, who is uh, fucking awesome, yeah, versus Dark Souls three, which is just the end boss, and you're like, oh, really? Like that's it? Like I get it, but really? Yeah, it's um, it's. I mean, it feels like they couldn't come up with a good design, and so they're like, oh fuck it, let's just do like, like all the player characters like kind of smashed into one melty guy. It's boring. It's boring. It's safe. Uh, I mean, a lot of the areas, I think also a lot of people like Dark Souls 3 because they don't realize that literally everything in that entire fucking game is a remix of stuff from previous games, but not even in a cool original way. Like, like the jail. It's just worse. Yeah, like, yeah. The, like the jail is, is basically just a shitty Tower of Latria with like a lot of weird connective tissue that's boring uh the undead settlement is literally just undead burg but kind of shitty the fat ministers are just the fat ministers from demon souls but not as cool um uh lothric is you know the classic voluntary i'll give them a pass on that because they always got to have the castle area yeah um i think there's definitely this like the focus on detail like everything is so over overly detailed, detailed but like the base design sucks yeah i mean like that kind of too though yeah like the color scheme is fine at least for lothric like red and gold for is lothric, cool. yeah yeah um but then you know say you have the like forest area which is a just a slap in the face to dark root garden uh the poison swamp which is a slap in the face to uh to Blight Town. The previous or... Poison Swamps, for sure. Yeah. Even Shrek Swamp, man. Yeah, I like even... Shrek Swamp more. Yeah, at least Shrek Swamp is original, you know? Uh, yeah, it doesn't... It's, unique. It's, it's weird, it doesn't really work, but... In, and also, it's just like, in Dark Souls 2, the pace is, like, so quick, you just kind of, like... You kind of just run through like, it, yeah. You kind of go through it quick, yeah. In Dark Souls 3, that fucking Farron's Keep is... It's horrible. It, it might be my least favorite area in all the games. Yeah, uh... Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, what other areas? At least now I know how to. At least I know how to get past it fast now. Like I've yeah. done it. In, like now, most recent playthrough, I, I know like find the first two are pretty easy, and then you go up the tower and you kind of see the third and kind of point out the direction. Go back to the second one. That's where you go. You're like okay. Yeah. I get it. Um, the DLCs are cool. Ashes of Ariandel is is unique, uh, considering it's just a painted world. Um, but it's it's more unique. It's kind of in between Painted World and the Dark Souls 2 DLC, uh, and the Ring yeah. City is cool. That's probably like the only like legitimately like kind of original feeling thing in in Souls 3 uh, is the Ring City uh, DLC. Yeah, I like the the basic enemies in the area too. Yeah, are really cool. good. They try. Uh, we almost are, we're almost forgetting the. Uh, they try to do the the what's it called boss from Demon Souls. 
The one where it's a you, you you fight a player as a boss. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, Ooh. I did. And Demon Souls, it was like it was cool and original, like, revolutionary. Yeah, and then Dark Souls three, they kind of half-assed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it well, it did, and like the area was cool that it was in a Demon Souls. You know, it was like the top off the Latria. Like there was lore behind why that was even happening. You know, like the arena was fucking cool as hell. Oh you know, yeah. Uh, there was a lot more going for it there. Whereas in this game, like, like a lot of stuff in Dark Souls Three, it feels like they just took something from the previous game and slapped it in there. Uh, yeah, it's like a set dressing more than like. It's kind of missing the like the yeah, there's just a sense of missing the spark that, you know, a lot of the games had. Like even when things don't work, especially like you know Dark Souls Two being one that like yeah things that look kind of off and people say the end of the last third of dark souls but they're dead wrong actually they're just actually wrong yeah we I, talk shit about the last third of dark souls i really don't understand we didn't that. even talk about that yeah it doesn't make any sense i mean band of chaos yeah like whatever it's like one fight it takes like it's kind of frustrating it's kind of weird do it and that's it but. yeah i mean i kind of i mean i don't know i don't hate it that much because at least like have you seen another boss that looks like that besides the final boss of kingsfield one like, have you ever seen that before? I don't think there, so. There's nothing, nothing else. Yeah, like, I'm, like, as frustrating as it is, it's unique. It's original. It's cool looking. Uh, it has interesting design elements, even if they are frustrating. It's you know, it's not like hey, any you of the uh, other bosses. You do like a PlayStation Two platformer slide into the arena. And yeah. You kind of moves side to side. And you break some branches. Like that, honestly. Like replaying Dark Souls One. I was like, oh, he's better chaos. Let's see what I think of it now. Like, that happened. I was like, I almost forgot. Oh, my God, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... And, like, I, I fucking... I mean, my the my love of, like, weird cryptic game design also came in when the tree... Like, you try to roll the tree batch, like, slam, slaps you to, like, the other side of the arena and <laughs> fall down a pit. Yeah. You jump, slaps you across, and you fall into a pit. Like, it's funny. Like, I, I don't know. That, like, it is. It, I, I think, think people... it took me, like, five or six times to actually do it, but I kind of got a crack out of it every every time yeah i think i think a lot of people like want to somehow not die in their dark souls games uh like um whereas i consider that very much a core core part of the experience and so when there's a boss that just i mean i guess it does go against the idea that usually it's very fair and if you play really well you can pretty much always win the first time uh yeah but it does go very boring that. But um, I like that they tried something different, and maybe it didn't work so well, but it was kind of cool. So Yeah, so, like, I take that over a lot of the kind of just boring fights and stuff from Dark Souls 3. Like, I would take that over a rotted <laughs> tree spirit or oh, rotted tree Eggman any day. That's probably my least favorite boss. That fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> It like and it drops you into that weird area. I think there's like a covenant down there, but it's like useless. It's like the most random, useless covenant ever. Um, yeah. I mean, not to mention, of course, too. You know, like they keep bringing back uh, Solaire's covenant. You know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's just like yeah. I feel. Oh if... yeah, we didn't even really talk about the reuse of like. It's it seems like Dark Souls Three is like wants to be like remember dark souls one and then dark Souls like when it, anything related to dark souls 2 it's just like dark souls 2 fans you get an armor set <laughs> dark souls 2 fans you get you get ladder smith gilligan he's dead uh in a pile of ladders it's kinda, everything it's else is fine. just like exactly dark souls pretty much like um, like uh to the point of like questionable artistic integrity of like yeah like we live trying to relive the success of dark souls one yeah like we're just we're fuck it we're just gonna bring back uh sigward of katarina he's exactly the same guy like even though like the only character really canonically in the soul series that reappears as himself is patches fuck it we're just bringing back the onion knight um and crestfallen i'd say yeah crestfallen he's allowed to he's allowed to be be there i mean he's been there since kingsfield but, one you can't you can't actually, stop now yeah but there, i think there's a difference Chris Fallen, he's literally just a depressed dude vibing out patches is, is like he has a name he is like a character yeah i think that is a big difference like having reoccurring themes of characters is completely cool yeah patches being like a unique exception of like 
this tricky motherfuckers in all my games. Well, and yeah, then it, it adds Sigmar to his is Sigma just feels like it makes me it don't make me feel good to be like, oh he's back. It's kinda weird. Yeah, like at first like he pops up and you're like, oh that's cool. And then you start thinking about it and you're like Oh. It's the same Yeah, guy. It's he even has like guy. a special like entrance and stuff. It's like remember him? Yeah. He's like on the elevator, he like pops up. Like, Ooh, right. and, there's, and there's the guy who's just the ripoff of Garl Vinland from um Demon Souls. Oh too. yeah. Like just worse. Just completely worse. Like his design isn't as cool. I mean it's kinda cool, but it's like not quite as cool and those characters Wait, are like meaningless in the grand scheme of things. Let me try to remember. Garvinlin is the like big sword homie that helps you out with Penetrator, right? No, that's that's Bior. Uh, oh, because I no, thought no, you were no. kind of comparing Bior with uh, the one guy that's like guarding the one prisoner lady. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, no, uh, Maiden Astrea, remember? Um, her bodyguard is the guy with the big smashy hammer thing. Big smashy hammer bodyguard guy. Maiden Astrea! Is, is he, like, yeah, wait. Oh, oh, God. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he's the guy that you fight, and then you go kill, uh, and then Maiden I know Astrea exactly kills what you're himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. They reused that design again. <laughs> like, okay. Um, just boring. <laughs> yeah, that is boring. Anyway. Like if you played it, like it, it, if you played maybe like if it is your first Souls game and you're not as familiar with these ideas, like in the, because for people more experienced with them, it it feels at least for us, if at least for me, it felt kind of gross. It felt kind of that gross. Oh yeah, kind of gross. It's kind of gross. It's gonna. It's like they're sprinkled in. They're not like. It it feels like it's like toppings, and it's but it's not oh. like the core values and ideas. And yeah, exactly. And of course, uh, the blacksmith is just straight up Andre, for some reason. Like, and they have what the fuck? they have a Dark Souls two witch lady just sitting in there, like it's just a weird mashup of like, what? Like it's I mean, just very yeah. confusing. Straight up fan fiction level shit. The only yeah. guy I like, the only guy I really like in the that area, I like the one uh, sneaky merchant. I like that you can send him out to sneak more. Yeah. Sneak stuff. He's like and actually then the really uh, original kind of people. Bossles here. guy. It's way too easy to make bossles. I thought that was kind of weird, but I mean, that's fine. Yeah, that's whatever. It's whatever. Like yeah, you just go up to him, but I like how he's like, eh, "I'm the old uh, champion," and he's just a skeleton talking yeah. skeleton, basically. I yeah. think that's kind of funny. Yeah, he's cool, and I like his I like his dialogue too. He's like, "I may be small, but I will die a colossus." That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so that's Dark Souls Three, dude. I'm fucking hyped to talk about Sekiro. Oh, Sekiro. Alright, I gotta see where you're putting this. I, I knew where I was putting this. It's hard for me, honestly. It's a really hard one. It's a fucking hard one. It's fucking hard, dude. It doesn't feel right to put it on the same level as Bloodborne. Oh yeah, that don't feel right. That's why, like, that's actually been like my whole thing with me <laughs> remaking my tier list. Yeah, but it doesn't. That's just feel like right. I can't. It can't be in the same tier. Like, it has to be one above. Yeah, but it doesn't. Feel, it's it doesn't belong at Demon Souls or Dark Souls level. So I guess there does have have to be an A plus tier, a special Sekiro level. Yeah, because it's it, it's extremely good. It's better. It is better than Bloodborne, for sure. Uh, yeah. It. I mean, I it is. It is the. It is Bloodborne, but better. <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh, gameplay wise. Yeah, has a much more unique. I mean, it's obviously, out of all their games, it's the most Eastern influenced art style, but it's still very uniquely from soft everything about the look of the game feels like they really just the artistic like design team for from software is like truly incredible like every area yeah. from of Sekiro looks gorgeous really good yeah absolutely fantastic like every single area looks good well there's that there's that one little weird stinky cave 
Yeah. I was thinking of that exact stinky cave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of a weird area. That's that's kind of a like a Kingsfield Dark Souls 2 kind of area. Yeah, it is. Uh, in my in my Sekiro. Yeah. <laughs> but literally everything else looks fantastic. And of course every boss is like is like a revelation. You know, like whereas yeah. Bloodborne, like it's kind of up and down, and eh, there's some really good bosses. There's some that are just like, okay, whatever. Every boss in Sekiro is fun. Like, yeah, they all hit hard. Yeah, like even if it's just a generic guy with a spear, you're you remember him. You know, like you remember that shit. Like it was a big part of your playthrough at the time. Um, yeah, and of course the the difficulty curve is completely unmatched. Uh, I like that this game throws out the window the idea of, like, uh, in the other Souls games, it's, you know, it's part skill, but part strategy, part tactics, you know, part build, part, like, how am I going to cheese this boss? How am I going to take advantage of the AI, maybe, to win? Sekiro was like, no, fuck you. You're going to press the right button, or you're going to lose. Um, yeah. And I like that a lot. Um, and And I think that's extra good that it's not in a souls game because it's not very soulsy design souls isn't about just being the most challenging thing ever uh whereas sekiro like you're supposed to be wolf you're supposed to be the greatest shinobi of all time and uh if you can't um you know beat the greatest uh like samurai of all time uh toe to toe you know no tricks or anything then you know uh you're not wolf you're just a uh, you're just a poser yeah, just a poser. Yeah. Um, just a wee, wee baby gamer. <laughs> pretty much. Um, and, yeah. Uh, oh, I love that about this game, I think. Yeah. The characterization of Wolf and, like, how the mechanics, like, definitely like, re reinforce his character, who he is, like, what he would do, and only give you those options is, like, voila, it's so... Uh, such a uniquely satisfying gameplay and thematic experience yeah and narrative it's one of the few games that has mm, like yeah like an actual narrative to it that is satisfying and has like intense like e e most every boss fight is like isn't just a cool guy that you found that you may have heard about it's like that's your fucking dad you know <laughs> yeah the, no none of these games you kill god in some of these games you never kill your dad i've been <laughs> wanting to kill my dad <laughs> <laughs> exactly um i mean you sort of kill your mom too actually now that i think of it lady uh, butterfly is kind of like your mother figure in the game i guess yeah yeah like every character is personally connected to wolf himself which raises the stakes that much higher and they're all given um like um the uh thematic uh we're overusing that word now but <laughs> they're all given the arena the time and the place you know in the story that they deserve you know yeah like um, the, the the boss fights somehow they managed to like in the narrative make all right what is the like interpersonal climax between these two characters that's when their fight is yeah like when when is there a peak a clashing of you know who they are their ideologies their beliefs that peak that is their fight and it just goes so hard yeah it's so satisfying like dude that, play. that that fight with and also i love how they reuse the the top of ashina castle for like a couple very pivotal pivotal fights because mm -hmm. it's such a great arena. I mean, it's it's uh, you know metaphorically like you're above, you're at the top of the kingdom, like fighting over like like it it like hello yeah yeah like it visually represents what's happening in the story. Um, and, you know, in the first time uh, with Genichiro, like it's 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 such a good fight for so many different reasons. One of them being that it is like the point in the story and in uh, the gameplay where. If you cannot beat this guy, you cannot beat the game. Uh, yeah. And like it really, um, it's it's really built up well too. It's not like they just throw you in there with no chance of surviving. Like they have the the little guy underneath, the, just the generic samurai guy that you have to learn to parry really well with. 
and basically that's the final check to see like hey do you know how to deflect or not because if not you're not going to make it <laughs> um yeah and then Genichiro mm. is is the real test of like this is what the game's going to be like and um and it's perfect too against against the rival you know the guy that cut your arm off you know it's a great it's a great time to come get some revenge or or uh give up you know yeah it's a very i mean he's actually that is actually my favorite fight in the game so yeah. i think for some reason i don't know you shouldn't just get a little like i can be focused for a three phase boss fight four phases i i'm a little i get a little dragged out unfortunately i don't have i don't have the stamina for a four phase boss fight <laughs> that is what I, that's what i like about it though yeah like it, it really pushes you to your absolute limit which is great yeah it, ta then, it takes you like, to the one your that limit, i want to play and then the one i want to play you. again is the, yeah it really does uh, that last phase you just so much lightning and oh god it's just nuts but uh yeah genitra shit's uh, he is he is like lawless a boss fight for me i would say honestly yeah yeah i can't think of anything i could possibly even imagine being better changing versus like working your way up to him your backstory with him the like direct like opposing like viewpoints yeah he's basically flawless i love the the two you have two phases and then you have the cutscene into the third which like kind of like turns a game that has some like a uh, mystical supernatural elements but then it kind of like turns it like really on its head like in a more grandiose manner he's swinging lightning at you it's like yeah. this grand it's such a it feels so uh, impactful and like so well done to make it feel grandiose without being like too much yeah that's you know that's another uh good point though too is the um is like the drip feed of fantasy elements like mm -hmm. you start off with your basic you know elements you expect from a souls game you know like undeath stuff like that but in general it's like regular dudes for the most part you know there's no like weird creatures or nobody's shooting magic at you or anything like that um and then you get to that kenichiro fight and you're like oh oh like there's there's some shit going on um and that's your, mm -hmm. really your first inkling of it um and you go pretty much like the whole game honestly without having too much more uh like there's kind of some horror some body horror some minor fantasy elements but like if you really want to get like the deep fantastical magical lore of the game like you have to do like the super secret special ending and go to the magical dragon palace and and that's where it really fucking pops off in terms of um, like uh, I don't even not like phantasm you know just fantastical mm -hmm. coolness uh, and and the fact that I think that they wait so long to to give you that like huge kind of fantastical magical payoff it really feels like something special like at the end of the game it's the only area that's just fully like you know it's it's like a fantasy thing you know like you're in like, yeah. heaven with dragons and shit oh yeah it's like you talking specifically about the dragon boss fight yeah and in the area leading up to it yeah and like yeah. When, the, when the rope guy like picks you up and everything you're like oh shit yeah and i was, I was like oh like how am i gonna fight this guy and he's like no, i'm just gonna help you out <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he just like scoops you up oh man the, the scene like the visual of that was so amazing yeah the visuals are in that is one of my favorite looking areas ever in a fromsoft game uh, yeah there's such a really unique uh Sekiro really captures that really well actually i think there's like i mean the actual combat the fighting is so like uh, aggressive and in your face and brutal it's like i mean the death blows are like nasty yeah but there's definitely this like really gorgeous like elegant. tranquility with it yeah it's yeah. so elegant it's so well done and introduced like so with so much care yeah like it feels so well crafted in that sense not just like in all the the it being like a shorter like a shorter game a more like focused game 
and I think it really benefits. It's one that benefits from that more so than like a. Well, I can't really say Dark Souls. Dark Souls Three is long as hell, but like Dark Souls Two is kind of going for more like a focused. But Born and Dark Souls Three kind of go for more like a focused. Uh, less expansive. Uh, how do I even say that? They're not trying to. They're not trying to fuck around and. Well, Bloodborne is trying to experiment, but uh, a little bit. I don't. Know. Yeah. Oh, that's what you thought a little I mean, bit. Sekiro is really the only game I think that does what it does in the FromSoft library. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's you know it's like that. mechanically, narratively, all like everything comes together and interacts so like well with each other. Yeah, like, it's actually insane. The only reason it's not S tier is because it's not the original Souls game, and I don't think it's for everybody. You know, not everybody can play Sekiro, honestly. Uh, yeah, no, like, there's some people that just, like, I think a, a lot of people can play Dark Souls. Yeah, like, my sister can beat Dark Souls, but she yeah. wouldn't even be able to get past the first boss in Sekiro. Yeah, no, Sekiro is a much more uh, specific gameplay experience. Yeah. For sure. That's a, I mean, there's an argument for that being, like, a positive or, like, a detriment. I think it still really shows that FromSoft is still very much dedicated to uh, providing very unique experiences and taking a lot of challenge uh, or uh, risks like that. I think Sekiro, despite being a more straightforward action game, is taking a lot of risks. It is. Like, action games still usually have, like, let's say, like, Devil May Cry, you have multiple difficulties, you have... You know, like, even like Platinum games, the same thing. Multiple difficulties, there's uh, the first playthrough is kind of like a tutorial on like the easy mode, and then afterwards, you know, you play on hard, you get more like the meat of the mechanics. Sekiro, there is, it's such a rigid system. There's, yeah. like, you can kind of use some items, you can kind of use the prosthetics to kind of help out, but like, if there's a level of, there's so many skill checks, like, boom. Oh, like hard wall skill checks in Sekiro, yeah. That you just have to f learn, get through. Yeah, well, and that's one of the reasons too that um, it's one of the most triumphant feeling from soft games because that is kind of one of one of the design philosophies. Even though there is always a way around that skill love uh, skill wall generally, whereas Sekiro, mm -hmm. um, like it feels so genuine. Like when you finally beat a boss, because you're like. Like I didn't do anything funny to get around this. Like I, I, like, um, I just got good. <laughs> um, yeah, and it feels I amazing. Expected. I saw the red symbol. I either jumped or uh, Mickery countered. You know, yeah. like you just do the thing the game says to do at the right time. Yep. And, and you uh, hold that focus for a very long time. Yes. And um, that's another reason, too, why the dragon boss fight feels so great, too, because it's at the end of this really just hard slog, and you've had this just such an intense difficulty curve over the course of the game, and then it treats you with this just magnificent, pretty boss fight where it's not really that hard, but you just get to, you know, kind of relax and, like, enjoy the game for a minute. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just good. Oh, God, just the way the, it ends with, like... Like, you stab the dragon, but you just get the tear, and then you just, like, leave it alone like that. That's such a gorgeous seed deal. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love the way that ends. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you, you don't like Ishin, but I love Ishin. It's exactly oh, what I... Like, I don't like him. He's still, like, one of the best bosses in FromSoft history. He just, like, I just... Every time I think back to him, I'm just like, fuck. It's a definitely, <laughs> it's definitely a slog, but uh, I'm... I'm firmly in the camp that a final boss should be hard as fuck, should be long as fuck, uh, because this is the last time you're going to be interacting with the game, and I want to get my fucking money's worth, you know? <laughs> so. Alright, is it time? I think it's time. Well, I mean, first of all, we can uh, put... Oh, do yeah, we even need to talk about Demon Souls Remake? <laughs> no, it's doo-doo. If you play Demon Souls Remake, you suck. Just get a fucking emulator, dude. Just play well, the original. I... You know, I played Demon Souls Remake. Well, yeah, because you're a poopy butt with a PS5. <laughs> I did have a PS5, but I bought Demon Souls. Yeah. Remake, it is... Uh, it's 
Yeah, they do a lot of bad things. Oh, I, I don't look at it as a complete travesty. It's like, it's interesting that it exists. It's like a weird alternate reality where a less interesting team of like visual artists and designers kind of look at what like, the, one of the greatest games ever made. Or like, in my opinion, like probably the greatest game ever made. <laughs> did. <laughs> And they're like, hey, we can improve that. Uh, let's take this fucking Picasso and paint over it. Yeah, it kind of has that vibe, for it's sure. Like, it, it really shouldn't exist. The, the money and time that these people put towards this game, I honestly think they could have had... Any any of those people could have come up with you know better things to work on that could have really benefited the world. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a face only a gamer could love. Like, this yeah. is... Like, I, I'm sure that plenty of gamers out there think that this is what they want and think this is like, wow, it's better because it's more detailed. And when I do a backstab, I hit him three times in the back. Um, but that is yeah, not what I, I like about Yeah, I think it's a games. unique animation. Yeah, no, Demon Souls didn't have any of that, but it's still an infinitely better game. Yeah. Than even the games that we've talked, like, it's still the better game than, I mean, we have it ranked as our favorite. Like, yeah. All these other games have done so much new, like, additional stuff, but Demon Souls still feels like such a monumental game. It's like, it's a big, I don't know, it's a big deal. Demon Souls remake is, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's a shame a, that it was made. It's a weird cash grab that doesn't make any sense and would have been better suited. If they just uh, upscaled Demon Souls, made it 60 frames per second, uh, maybe, yeah. you know, I mean, that's really all they needed to do and like re release I mean, it. People have talked about Dark Souls Remastered, like, ooh, they like, like, didn't change enough and they just made it 60 frames. They did some resolution work. Perfect. It's literally the perfect port. Like, it's. It, it, I tried playing Dark Souls on PS3 recently because I still have my copy and it. It runs, it, there is enough technical issues where I felt like I was kind of like hindered from the experience. Our Dark Souls Remastered played it on my PS5 and I'm like, this is fantastic. Like, this is like one of the best games ever made. So, yeah. Like, Demon Souls, all it needs is like that. Just change the frame rate, up some resolution a little bit. And then Quality of life. Literally, that's it. Quality of life. Yeah. It's a 2009. The only reason why it would need that is because it's a console only game from. No, 2009. Yeah. Like, accessibility for it's kind of lame. Same thing with, like, we have a like, Bloodborne needs a port. Like, yeah, I get it. Bloodborne doesn't need a port because of the frame rate. The frame rate's fine. It means animations are specifically made for the frame rate. Everybody else is just... Everyone yeah, well, says it needs frames per second. I think it's a little extra. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it great, should be on but... PC, you know? It's like, yeah. it, it just sucks having such a good game locked to one console. You know, yeah, and, for, and for you know longevity's sake you know in 20 years if you want to play bloodborne it's gonna suck ass you know it needs to be on some oh, yeah. other kind of it needs to survive somehow and being stuck on the ps4 is not the way all right let's do it elden ring all right eldan ring i know where this goes Boop. i'm really curious where you put it oh mm. interesting I think Elden Ring is to Souls what Sekiro is to Bloodborne. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a really good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, it is yeah. It is obviously the largest. It is big Dark Souls. It uh, has the most boss fights, the most content. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just not as uh, tight and focused and refined. I mean, in, in ways it's refined. But um, it's uh, it's it's not as good for uh, repeat playthroughs, if that makes any sense. No, I think that I have like practically I have very very little to say that's negative about Elden Ring besides that. Yeah, I think like for all I think of, uh, uh, for all of its choice. And all of the options, like, by the end of the game, everything just kind of rolls into one, uh, which is, um, like, all, like, it, it's almost too much, honestly. Um, like, I love it very much, and I'm going to be playing it for years to come, uh, and it's a fantastic, it's the best open world game, probably ever. Um, yeah, that we've played. Yeah, but I can't I, think of anything. 
Yeah, but as a Souls game, um, there's just something, just a little something missing, and I can't can't quite put my finger on it. Mm. Uh, and so it's it's not it's not quite it's not quite up there with Dark Souls and Demon Souls, but it is uh, better than the rest of the series. That is interesting. I think, for me, uh, I, Elden Ring is basically everything I want from a From Software game and more handed me in like a perfect, pristine little package. And I say, thanks. That's about it. It's right. like every single aspect of it. I like basically like drooling over i've never been as interested in like the lore or the characters the lore is it's insanely Elden Ring. good yeah yeah the lore like, is really good and people at least like so much of the discourse around it being like well it's uh not like what's the central theme and like all this stuff it's like you're literally killing god the killing theme, god the theme is freedom right yeah well in the sense of more uh people of power holding on to their power for and seeing the world well, burn that's, that's as the a result of it. That's just that the classic the... Souls thing. Yes. Right? That's every Souls game. It takes that, but there is a lot more... That is, like, the central theme, but there is so much more, like, individual, like, demigod character, like, interactions and stories and motivations. I think, like, trying to understand these characters, these, these larger-than-life characters' motivations in this world is what kind of drew me in to the story because even just asking like america she's not even really in the game like what is her motivation what's her character what does she want does she want to destroy the world does she want the does she want to continue being god like there's and why did she shout like even just asking like the essential event of the entire game why did she shatter the end elden ring is like a heavy loaded question there's a lot of did multiple different perspectives to see it, different theories. Did she want her? Did she even want her son to be killed or assassinated, Godwin? Like, there's some reason to believe even yes, yeah, she might have set that up. But my, I mean, this isn't necessarily a Thor, a uh, lore talk. But I love that there's so many questions. I love that there's so much to kind of look at and explore, and there's so much history. And it doesn't like it feels like the other games even like dark souls it felt like they're the world like dark souls 2 obviously has themes of like many many years of or like uh, generations of kingdoms falling rising falling it's that's when it starts to build up like that but elden ring feels like this is like one world and it's been like thousands of years like these yeah. are demi gods these are people beings that are powerful beyond like anything we can possibly comprehend and and also at the same time their design replicates that as well which i love yeah that's one like of my favorite gameplay things design about it. yeah like the core bosses are just like so freaking good oh yeah is there a lot yeah. of shit coming through my mic right now i don't think so my levels were looking bad sorry oh shit i'll we'll have to cut that out uh -huh. yeah, that's whatever um, but uh but yeah uh, that's that's one of the best things about it is is the lore uh i love how each most of the bosses have very very uh well de not well defined but at least enough for you to get a really good sense of what kind of character this is why they're fighting you you know like it, there's a lot more uh invested into into why you're even fighting these people and who they are and 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 mm -hmm. what what the grander scheme of it all is which is really cool yeah just like the individual stories are so interesting like or got uh basically stockholm syndrome <laughs> boss of the game yeah uh falling in love with the golden order when golden order is everything that thought to see him imprisoned and basically just like separated from society his whole life mo just being a disgusting freak boy yeah uh <laughs> Rikard being a disgusting freak boy. <laughs> oh, Rikard is so good. But these are like the like the ultimate like nasty dudes in all of their games. Like just unbelievable, like just legendarily nasty guys. <laughs> yeah. so those two are really like uh, the whole uh, all these demigods. And what's interesting is that also the story elements of 
each one being tied to an outer god. And, and these outer gods are almost using them to have influence in this world as well. So even like the people that you think are the most powerful are really just being subjected to like a well, almost like tyrannical sense of control and any like attempt they make to go against it usually leads in you know, suffering or you know in case of like Belania using this outer god like the rot god to you know basically nuke Kaled <laughs> you know girl boss uh, gatekeep <laughs> gaslight Melania she is really is a girl, girl boss. Boss. Yeah, yes. I saw I saw a post on Reddit the other day that I thought nobody with a brain would ever like actually do because it was just so cliche. The post was just like the hottest from software boss, and it had like two K <laughs> upvotes. <laughs> <laughs> like really? <laughs> it's a, Thanks. It's a, it's a real thing that somebody wanted to post. I mean, the hottest character in all Souls history is obviously the lizard lady in her lizard form. Yeah, I mean, that's not She's even the, close. Yeah, not even close. Best, best, uh, best, most attractive, sexy character. Actually, one of the best side characters. The yeah, side characters likable. are so damn good. The main characters are so damn good. I, 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 I've gotten so invested in, like, the character design is so memorable. It's so uniquely from software. There's, like, Turtle Pope. Turtle Pope's yeah. great. He's not even, like, that essential of a character, but, like, his design, you just see him, and it's just, it, you're just like, this is so, man, it feels, like, almost obvious. Yeah. Sense. It's Turtle to Pope. What's create like? this character. And there is that sense of, yeah, mixing new and old philosophies, but they're absolutely, like, just pristine character design in this game. The NPCs yes. are so memorable, so good, and all the little side quests, are, I love, the happy side quests are so good, and they're so meaningful, too. Yeah. The one with, like, the Bach, the, did, you, did you even uh, do uh, Bach the Seamster? Oh, yeah, he's one of the best. Yeah, Bach the Seamster, the Jellyfish. Oh, the oh. Jellyfish. Jellyfish, like, almost, like, really got them. That area is so fucking miserable. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Like, the, the, the rest of the mountain of the... the the mountain of the giants or whatever like that air the rest of it isn't that bad but the very opening of it those those and the main enemies are so tough in that area holy shit yeah well, the, the little squirrely dudes you're starting to you're starting to get towards uh why it's not an s uh in my opinion and um pretty much all of my criticisms nothing to do with the designs or the look or the characters anything like that the lore all that is pretty much perfect um it pretty much all has to do with uh, with the world layout. Uh, like as as much as I love having the huge open world, uh, I I don't really like so much how uh, you're kind of gated off in between each area. Uh, you go from Limgrave to Liernia, maybe back to Kaled, uh, to Atlas or to Altus, and and so on and so forth. And it's it's a huge hallway. Uh, but it does end up being a, a pretty pretty linear, uh, and I could do with honestly a lot less giant open fields with not much going on and a lot more legacy dungeons. Yeah, I, I think there's what there's. Uh, I mean, there's a ton. Of, you know, I I feel like I'm complaining at a five star one, two, you know, restaurant, three. But... There's besides the legacy dungeon, and the, yeah, that's the thing. Like, like if even if you just take like the legacy dungeon and then just like even some of like like even like the underground areas like mm -hmm. if you throw that it just like mash it together like you pretty much get like a dark souls game yeah like, and the, uh, like and those all those areas are just like fantastic so i and i understand but like looking at like a broad picture like as the whole like how do you under, like take into experience like yeah but if you're if you're not into the a lot of the open world areas then that is a huge part of the experience for it, sure it is nice i just i just miss uh like I mean, like I said, they've never done it quite like Dark Souls. Uh, yeah. You know, and and I would like to see a level design or a world design more similar to Dark Souls translated to the scale of an Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, I understand the the want for that for sure. Like, I think uh, the 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 moments of magic that exist in Dark Souls don't really uh, still. It, 
in a sense, they kind of they exist in a different way in Elden Ring, where it's just like they manage to fit these huge, like detailed, complex, like dungeons into the world naturally. All of them except I think two. Yeah, yeah. which that's a, that's amazing. Just uh, Pharaoh, Missoula, and Allergy, which both have actual like lore reasons for not even existing yeah. in the same place, and both of them you can still see like the geometry of the lands between, you know. But there isn't as many like. You know, uh, going to Undead Parish, going down the elevator, and you're back at Firelink Shrine. It's not like those incredible, like, holy yeah. shit! How the how did these get, uh, these developers uh, get away with this? <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I can't run down in the catacombs and grab grab the scythe. You know, immediately, like, there's a lot of weapons that are just gated off until like the very end of the game or very late areas, and you have to start like leveling up and using some shit by the time like before you can even get there and start putting your man together um which is, I, which is you know which is fine i guess but i would make the argument for the the, the some of the specific weapons uh, like mountain top of the giants because i i still don't think i don't think what we just fucking called uh they called it atlas Strike for so long yeah. is, what is the actual name uh Altus is plateau. it just atlas plateau oh, altus yeah. <laughs> i don't know why we Altus, yes. It's only gated off by... What we've, was it? There's we've, three dude, ways to get there. Yeah, we've yeah, talked yeah. about this. There's lots of ways to yeah. get there, but none of them are, like... Um, like, I remember... I, like, Because I specifically made a character that was to use a particular weapon, right? And it wasn't Altus, and it took maybe, like, an hour or two. It took a long-ass time and a lot of, a lot of gaming to get to that one weapon that I really wanted. And that's just an Altus, you know? What if I wanted something in, like, Paramazula? Oh, yeah, you're fucked down. Yeah, like, uh, an Altus yeah, that's, is really that's, not that's new game. That's just gonna be a new game plus weapon, pretty much. Right, right. And and I think that kind of... Uh, I mean, and it makes sense, because Elden Ring has a lot more things that are just, like, kind of, like, straight-up upgrades, you know? Because the, the length of the game is really stretched out. And it's nice to have some of those kind of like end game really strong items and stuff, but um, yeah, I mean, I could definitely use with a do with a with a less uh, linear experience. Maybe not quite is is um, dragged out. Maybe, um, mm. but I mean, it, it you know it feels bad to complain about having too much content, uh, but um, <laughs> you know you do end up skipping over most of the game. Um, in your second, and especially by the time you get to your third or fourth playthrough, you're like, fuck everything. I'm just going straight to, you know, uh, Landell. Um, and, you know, I think that's kind of, I, I don't know, it's hard to say that it's bad, but it, there is something um, that makes me feel sad about it. No, like, I'm, yeah, I think taking some time from the first playthrough is going to be pretty important to see what how this feels later, because first playthrough is just like, pure like ecstasy oh like, yeah like we were going through this game and it felt like it's we brilliant. were like usually like chatting with each other and we were just like every five or ten minutes we'd see something we'd be like holy shit like this is amazing like what what did we just see like a new enemy a new area a secret that led into a secret and a secret secret and like Oh my god, I opened a chest, I made fucking Kayla now. I smoke so much weed now I'm stuck in Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, like the map expanding, like they did, like that. Uh, it, actually, people talk compared to Breath of the Wild. I never fucking played Breath of the Wild because I, I don't know, I didn't oh, fucking it was, like it. It was whack. <laughs> I mean, it was like fine. It was a fine experiment for the Zelda series. I mean, you know, Zelda games are always kind of mid. You know, um, that probably will make some people mad at me, but uh, Dark Souls One has always been uh, like what I wanted from a Zelda game. That's why I like Twilight Princess the best. I felt like it was starting to go in a direction that I actually enjoyed. Uh, and then, um, well, the games afterwards happened and I really couldn't care less. Breath of the Wild, it's fine. It's a gigantic map uh, and it suffers from the fact that like pretty much uh, like there's nothing to do. There's maybe like uh, two or three actually unique places with uh, like real Zelda dungeons. You know, uh, and most of it is just an open fucking field where you uh, hunt for for uh, Korok sperm or, uh, you know, go to one of those little shrines that is like the same crappy minigame every time. Or not minigame, but like 
little baby puzzle every time. And so it kind yeah. of defeats the purpose of exploring when there's not really anything actually interesting to find. Yeah, and that, I think I put like six hours in the Breath of the Wild. That just, it really didn't flow with me. I would, I would kind of push myself for that. But uh, weirdly enough, the second playthrough of Elden Ring reminded me a lot of my me trying to play Super Mario Odyssey the second time. Have you ever played Super Mario Odyssey? <laughs> no. It's super random. But Odyssey is based on having like multiple uh, really uh, big worlds that are, are like uh, not big actually. Each level is like a kind of small but super densely packed open world. Like yeah. there's so much shit to do. There's so many ways. Like you need like little moons to progress. There's so many unique ways to get moons that you're just fucking getting them all the time. You throw your hat on the cactus. The cactus turns alive or whatever. You get a moon. You complete the main like the final area you get a moon but going through it again uh the side content just like, in the sense of exploration the, of discovery is kind of gone yeah. and the game feels kind of like hollow for a little bit it's kind of weird elden ring the sec the beginning of my second playthrough felt like that my new game plus to the point where i actually just abandoned new game plus i just made yeah. a new character and went through the game like that and that was actually like an amazing time the second playthrough I, was probably my favorite, actually, because I, I oh, uh, wow. spent all of the time, I explored everything in, in very intense detail, whereas the first game was more more or less, you know, it's like your first it's your first time through a Souls game, you know, you're kind of, you're not going to grab everything, you're you're probably just going to, you know, I get a little bored here, let's go on to the next area. But the second playthrough, I was being very completionist about it, and so uh seeing literally think, uh, everything the world had to offer uh was really great uh, but it, it made the subsequent playthroughs less fun i think completionist playthroughs of elden ring might be at least for me i think it kind of hinders the game a little bit though it does no it um, absolutely yeah. does it hasn't been as fun you... ever since yeah because once you see everything like that sense of the game really uh i mean I don't know if it's the game or my gamer brain, but the the excitement of feeling so, like seeing something new is just like, holy shit. Like my second playthrough, I well, accidentally like ended up in places that I didn't know existed still. Yeah. Like even after my first playthrough, and I was like, how the fuck did I not find this place? I played this game for 120 hours. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, there's this one area, my irony that comes up with me a lot, where there's these, like, ghost giants, and they're, like, fighting this, like, group for some fucking reason. Oh, and yeah. I like, yeah, I was like, this is insanely kind of cool, and it I is. missed it completely. It's, like, I'm, like, just, like, a little bit off, like, the main road. Yeah, it's nuts. But, yeah. uh, I think that that sense of exploration that makes your brain feel so good is definitely lacking. I think I have found a new big uh, place in my heart for why it's like because it, it really is like i've almost considered like it as good as like demon souls for me it mm. really is like everything i want in the game in a package like nicely handed to me is mechanically i absolutely like adore all the, I, the 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 true freedom in this game isn't just like the open world it's the freedom to balance the game completely up to how you want to play you can use mechanics to make it easier, harder. It's completely up to you. You have there's no other action RPG I can think of where you can become as just like ridiculously powerful as Elden, where you can abuse every single mechanic just to complete like nonsensical ways and just completely demolish the game at all. But then there's also obviously level one. You can fucking use the club still and you can still beat the game using a club level one it's still possible yeah it's just more miserable than usual <laughs> <laughs> it's more miserable in the end i would say because i mean there is a difficulty curve and the end game is brutal but even just like more markets of fucking it's a really difficult guy. even for somebody that's played all these games then like level some like challenge runs level one run some experience with that like Margit's a real difficult first, like, he's a really tough boss. He takes yes. a, like, all the bosses, their animations take a really, you need to have a very good understanding to see the, the openings. 
Yeah. You feel like they're constantly on your ass. They're constantly comboing. They're constantly doing this. It takes so long to kind of like all of a sudden you just like see it. You see the openings. You know where you, like it's because it's not just about dodge rolling every attack. You have to be very specific of positioning. Even like gas, maybe use a shield, use like the like a quick step, a bloodhound step, or whatever. Like, you need to get a little bit more creative with your defensive play in Elden Ring, and they really challenge that. You can't just dodge roll every single attack in a combo and expect to be okay. Like, you need to really understand where you're positioned, is usually is how they're going to determine their next part of the combo. And a lot of especially market market teaches you that if you're right up in his face. When he ends a combo, he's gonna do his little knife swipe, and that's like a really hard move to dodge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it gets you, and you, you kind of picks up, you pick up on that. The rest of the game does that too. I think Margaret's just harder than uh, Godric for some reason. That's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Godric just feels like a like very good. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really feel like a Dark Souls three, but I guess he kind of does. Godric is cool. Yeah, I, I like that. Great. I like that Elden Ring bosses feel like Elden Ring bosses. Uh, yeah, they're they, very uniquely Elden Ring. Yeah, they're 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 definitely tuned up uh, a lot from previous games, but uh, so is your stamina bar. Uh, so <laughs> you know, your stamina bar and your the tools you have. You have like so much more yeah. powerful tools in this game. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. great. And of course, you know, besides even magic and healing and uh, faith and all that kind of crap, uh, dude, you could just summon a little dude to help you out, like, any time you want. Yep. Um, yeah, the old Souls Pokemon. Yeah, exactly, which um, is kind of cool. Um, yeah, they all have their own, like, little things they do. In, like, in, like, I don't know, people just say, oh, they're, they're so powerful. Like, that's, if you use Mimic Tier plus 10, they feel too powerful because that's the most powerful one fully leveled up like yeah like it's very powerful but i mean in a lot of ways i found like uh my first playthrough i used the jellyfish a lot because you know i wasn't as familiar with the bosses i felt more comfortable with like, yeah throw a jellyfish like to try like just a little bit of aggro kind of taken jellyfish is like super tanky it worked out great yeah uh, yeah, yeah like you get to tune your own experience and you can even like Maybe you feel like, oh, I feel like it's too powerful. I'm going to stop leveling it up. You can do that if you really want to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I think a lot of it, though, is, you know, is that repeated playthrough, though. though. Um, I'm really hoping that in a few years, when I go back in, to Elden Ring, it'll feel fresh and uh, cool again. But, um, you know, playing Dark Souls and Demon Souls again really did uh, really affect the way I think about these things. Because Dark Souls, even though I remember every little fucking detail of it um it still felt fresh and fun and new to go back even though i i remembered every little bit about it uh whereas elden ring i'm worried um you know the bosses will still be fun but i'm worried that the that the experience of playing it won't age as well mm -hmm. yeah that's fair yeah you can go into the weeping, uh, weeping peninsula the first time super cool Every other time after that, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, like you just oh. skip that like whole fucking area. That's, yeah, you really um, can. Like, there's a lot. I mean, which is kind of cool, but um, like I said, in Dark I Souls, mean, somehow I go through every area all over again and do all the exploration, and I'm still like, damn, this rules. Uh, or as uh, in Elden Ring, it's like, you know, I'm kind of having fun, I'm like, eh. but it's the kind of fun you have when you're hanging out in RuneScape. You know, it's like, you know, I'm having fun playing game. I'm not having like a life changing experience. You know? Yeah, I think uh, I think there that that freedom of picking a uh, can picking like what you enjoyed the most in the game. It's kind of a it is a it is kind of a weird uh, double edged sword in a sense because yeah, like all the other games, they very much have like uh, it feels like a very crafted experience, and Elden Ring is definitely more of a get just like plopped off and there's so there's more optional content in Elden Ring than any of their other games like easily yeah. you yeah. could you could just kill Godric kill Renala kill Morgoth and then go uh, kill Fire Giant Godskin Duo 
uh, why can't I think his name right now? Um, um, Malakith. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I could, then you kill Gideon, you kill Godric, and then you kill Radagon. Like, that's, that's it. Like, that's the main, I, that's the required boss count. Yes. Which is super short. I can't, it, like, it would take me a lot longer to go through the required boss count for pretty much all these games, maybe except Sekiro. Sekiro is kind of, they more, like, finally pick, like, which are, like, the main bosses. Sekiro is yeah, a like, great fucking speedrun game. Oh yeah, I think, you can just I, fucking fly yeah, through I it. Think, Elden Ring, you can too, though. I, I love think, that about Elden Ring as well. Uh, I don't, dude. El have you seen Elden Ring speedruns? They fucking suck. I mean, it was kind of cool when uh, we were figuring out how to do it, but now it's like the speedrun is like a minute long, and it's just like you, oh, you those zap are the, right into the fucking. Thing. Well, those are the zap ones. I'm talking the best. Uh, the best Elden Ring speedrun is All Remembrance uh, Level One. Usually, that's my no, favorite. No, fuck that. See, in my, opinion, in my opinion, the best uh, speed run is always going to be any percent. And if the game, you know, doesn't really, like, if you have to make, like, extra requirements on top of it, it's just, it's not that fun. I don't know. Like Any percent? Then you just, you can just, I mean, Elden I love Ring any, has to I love any percent because, like, it's a combination of, like, breaking the game, but also, like, having to experience the content in a, in a way that's very satisfying. And there's no, like, you don't have to make any, like, limitations for yourself like you can just you know, blast the game as hard as you can you do know the any percent the zap that you're talking about is a frame perfect zap i know it's cool it it's is, just too short well I mean, yeah that's because they've managed to perfect it in the course of like how long has this game been out like six months now i mean i guess that's you know the end point of any speed run really but i mean dark souls demon souls dark souls 2 sakiro they all have really great fun to watch uh, speed runs even though they're any percent yeah Whereas, i mean just like, because the, it, is like, i mean it's not like no the game <laughs> it's not the game's fault really it's just kind of <laughs> you know how the how the runners managed to break the game but um yeah it, it is a minor think, uh, point one bad thing about the speed runs that one uh, thing that does make them kind of boring is the fact that the first 20 minutes are usually just like going around the maps just like Getting like the specific items needed to make the run kind of work. True. That's kind of a bummer. Like the yeah. first twenty minutes are usually just like, gotta get uh, all the buffs, gotta get like this weapon. Do the though I've I practiced doing the fucking Godskin uh, Apostle Skip and it's fucking brutal. And they just do it like every time frame perfect. That's a really hard skip. Oh my god. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just like jumping off of like abstract geometry in like very specific ways. But, uh, that's why I love any percent because it it combines that uh, with uh, like the um, with like a genuine like like you get that and then you also get like actual parts of the game like Sekiro for example like you can blast through most of the game but you still have to fight some really hard fucking bosses and like perfectly execute them at the same time. Yeah, I don't even think I mean the the current any percent you don't even have to fight a single boss like you die no. to God Godfrey and he gives you the Elden. Lord soul. <laughs> like yeah. it, it, I do love it in the sense that it's completely absurd though. Yeah, I, mean, like, I, like I like the absurdity of it. It's it great. is fun, yeah, as far as absurdity goes. It's just it's kinda sad that it got broken so early. You yeah, know, like there's not really a lot of like you know, like I said, all the other Souls games, we're still coming up with crazy ass shit. Um, you know, to shave time off the runs, but Elden Ring is like it's pretty much beat like they won they beat the the Elden Ring speed run. It's, you know. Oh, dude, I then I think I sent you the clip. Distortion uh, two, I think he was the one that kind of re it, like changed the Dark Souls two Scholar of the First Sin speed run actually because he. Uh, yeah, Distortion two is a legend. Yeah, he's, he's he's a really good one to watch. He's a lot of he's actually, I think uh, in the beginning like he was kind of like more quiet during all of this, but now he's more talkative. He's like a lot more playful with his like. Uh, speed runs why not but anyway he kind of figured out like another uh skip you can do in dark souls 2 where if you like jump and parry at the specific time or whatever you can like walk across planes like just like yeah. skip the whole levels and shit that was just like this earlier this year which is just like unbelievable to think about that's what i'm saying is like that's such that's such a more fun speed running scene like you know, there's yeah, like too many damn people were playing Elden Ring, man. That's why this shit should have been found out like seven years from now, not like six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of anticlimactic. Um, 
and yeah, but um, mm -hmm. such is the way. Yeah. Elden Ring, good game. Dude, Distortion is uh, is uh, his uh, randomize all entities uh, playthrough. That was a good play. I have not seen that. Oh, maybe I'll link it. So, to you after all this. right, speed runs, kind of lame. Challenge runs, probably the best in all of the games. Elden Ring challenge runs, I freaking love them. They are a lot of fun. Okay, I'll just take like, your word for it. Watching, oh, I've seen so many by now. I've seen like killing, beating the game using only the butt smash is a classic. Yeah, that was fun. Killing the game with, uh, at fully, like, I think uh, Iron Pineapple did it, like, fully encumbered the entire game. That was a good one, too. Yeah, because he just had to one. walk. He couldn't even jump. Yeah. And then uh, using only summons, which just, like, requires you to use, like, the faith and, like, the healing incantations that, that was another buff good summons. One. That's true. There's yeah. some really good challenge runs. Yeah, they're super entertaining. I mean, a lot of people are just making more content because more people played Elden Ring. It's more popular game. But yeah. the amount of creativity that you can kind of uh, bring to the table with Elden Ring because of how free it is mechanically as a action RPG is definitely a lot of fun. Indeed. I think uh, like my first, I mean, the second run I did was the, I used the samurai class only. I didn't level up and just leveled up my, my weapons and stuff and got all the way to Fire Giant before I gave up and used, leveled up just enough to use uh, uh, Rivers of Blood. But still, <laughs> very, very fun run. Made bosses that I thought were kind of lame, like, really awesome. I thought Dr Draconic Tree Sentinel was kind of a pushover my first run, and then I had to beat him without getting hit, and it was a fantastic time. So, yeah, great stuff like that. GG. There, there's... Yeah, this is, Elden Ring's a big, kind of messy, like, it's a big, grandiose game. It's, like, kind of messy, has some, like, does kind of feel weird playing again compared to the other games just because of its, like, design. It's, like, overall game design is much different, and it kind of leads to, like, the first playthrough being, like, the first and second maybe being, like, a big highlight. But I still, it feels like uh, definitely kind of like a revelation to me in terms of, game design and like artistic like direction as well i think there's not many games where that looks as like artistically like a like a fucking painting even if you just move your camera around slightly like depending on where you're at like that's it's absolutely true it's just ridiculous how like i can't even really process because i only i don't even know i don't know programming at all but obviously Throughout the last, you know, like 20, it's been 25, 20, 25 to 30 years of you no know, 3D game design. Like what it means to create a 3D world, how to program 3D places. And they've reached the level of mastery, I don't think, is anywhere else. Well, that's not just programming. That's a lot of the I design. mean, programming, I mean, that's, but also some Disneyland artistic shit. design as well. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> it's like, not like straight up. Like, a lot of what they do to make it look so much like a painting is like straight up, like, out of the Imagineer playbook. And a lot of it is about sight lines, like, you know, putting rocks uh, strategically in certain places, trees and such to, to draw your eye in certain di directions. Um, yeah, it's just really, really good design. Uh, it's really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just really good. Yeah, they, I don't know that they, they have some magic in yeah. that department for sure. Yeah, for, especially for this game. I mean, other games, I think there's like big glimpses of it. I think Sekiro has a lot of that too. I mean, all the games Sekiro have it in different places, job, the yeah. different degrees, but this game, it just felt like all, all in almost all the entire game yeah the fact that they managed they managed to make literally like any area on the overworld look that good is really an accomplishment yeah i think the only two areas that kind of stand out is kind of meh maybe like moog's palace maybe oh, yeah, yeah moog's maybe. palace and then the, the little deep root little area certain areas because Milky I, River, like, uh, that, like, there's there's some areas that definitely yeah. and like obviously the asset reuse of a lot of the dungeons, like we met, talked about this a little bit ago, but like the uh, acid reuse being kind of lame, like the visual design being kind of bland, but then being designed, you know, with the FromSoft dungeon design is like kind of the highlight of those areas for sure. Yeah, I they're think... not they're not really for visuals basically. 
Yeah, Kalid and uh, the Snowfields kind of suffer too from not really having a weenie, having like a big uh, landmark to to really fill out the oh, skyline. Yeah. Like you're looking around, and it's just kind of like uh, like dirt and slop and slime and snow. It's you know it's all right. It's still it's still um, I mean as good as you can get dirt and snow and slime and slop to look. Um, yeah. But you know it, it suffers from not having that bigger, uh, more memorable landmark for sure yeah the snowland should have made the little uh giant gauntlet thing bigger uh where you the, the where you the, where you go to burn the earth tree i forgot what it's whatever the fuck that thing's called yeah i wish you could just like maybe see it better um yeah that would actually been that, that would have been really cool i never even thought of that before i think being able to like see your final destination and like be quite like continue just climbing and climbing and you're you know you're already so freaking high like you're up with the earth tree you're like the, you can see little bits and pieces of like the prior areas down the ground that yeah. would have been a really nice touch to be able to see it from more like have that like a climactic kind of build up so yeah. there is kind of that area definitely kind of lacks uh, the same polish as the other open areas for sure yeah um you know that's actually something they finally got right in uh kingsfield 3 just saying <laughs> You start off in uh, like in one of the first areas. You look up, and you're like, "Oh shit, that's the final castle right there." I can see it. It's very cool. Even the actually even uh, Demon Souls did it too in Boletaria. Yeah, Demon Souls. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can see it. Demon Souls. Yeah. Dark Souls Boletaria. is all right in that department. Um, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I mean, actually, they, that is kind of a bummer because, like, the design oh, yeah. it's different though because they're trying to keep yeah. like like the coolest areas secret. They don't want you to see them. You know, they want it yeah. to be a surprise when you go over Sans Fortress and and there's Anne Orlando. You know. Yeah, exactly. It's just kind of a different vibe. Yeah, it is much different. So, so very cool though. Indeed. Dark Souls Two, the only one that like every single area <laughs> you go to is like it reimagines. <laughs> The look, uh, like if you see other landmarks, it basically has to re because they don't actually exist where no. it's looking. They have to reimagine <laughs> it in a different way, which at first is kind of like disappointing, but I kind of like it. It's a weird touch. Yeah, Dark Souls Two is funny. Uh, like it's like when you f like it. It's really good at like when you first get to an area, like that first uh, shot that you get of the area is perfect. Like, you, you get to see everything. Everything's framed really well. You see the castle you're going to, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then once you get into the level, that's when it kind of just, like, starts to fall apart a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, you know, whatever. They tried. It's yeah, fun. definitely. Yep. So, fun. all these games are fun. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, you should play every Souls game. If you're somebody who hasn't, uh, you're a nerd. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, big old big baby nerd. So there it is, eh? Uh, Souls definitive tier list. Yep, this is everything you need to know about Souls. Pretty much. Uh, you can you, you can compare between somebody who puts uh, uh, Dark Souls two in S tier and someone <laughs> who puts Dark Souls one in S tier. <laughs> I, and I think that pretty much covers the gambit of of, of opinions. Those are the two genders. Those are the two Souls genders. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, IPA. Hello. Hello.